need 10% or 9% or 8%. Or and the city council says, well, we'll give you 5%. What is it that they're going to have to do to make up that 3%? So I'm just, uh, I'm not, I'm not going to support that. I would just as soon see the, stay the way it is. So I just wanted to clarify that. Yeah. I appreciate you doing yeah. the research on it, Jane, and uh, reporting back to us. This is the public uh, comment section. Mary Ann, do you have anything you want to share? This is for public comment. Your only chance to speak to that. Um, I just got the draft today, said Councillor Mary Ann LaBarge from Ward 6. And um, I went over it very, very quickly. And I think you're asking on the draft, or whoever, 500 signatures for a mayor. I think it might be 250 signatures for a councilor at large. Those are, I would call, uh, book, uh, placeholders bookmarks. Uh, we have not decided any of the numbers yet. We've not decided any decisions. Tonight we start the decision-making process. Okay. What you saw was basically a boilerplate. Okay. And we're going to go through now, tonight, and walk our way through a whole series of decisions. Okay. And spend that between now and Thursday. So all of those little parts that we've been collecting information on for the last two public meetings uh, and all the other hearings that we've had, we want to then take what we've heard and put it into the document. So tonight we begin those decisions. Nothing's been made. Okay, but that's what I'm speaking about because it is a draft that has been emailed to us, counselors and to whoever, is to take a look at those figures okay. seriously, okay? Yeah. And talking with the city clerk also today, she had seen that. It was given to her. Her office only has two people. She said that it would be a tremendous burden of doing 250 signatures for each counselor on each ward, and I agree with that. It's pretty difficult. And even talking with one of the school committee members on my ward said she has difficulties just getting the 50. When I go into a home, I can't get out of there. It's either they want me to have tea, sit down and have coffee with them and talk, and I'm in there for hours. So I, I'm just saying that I Do you have a number that you would recommend, Mary Ann, as somebody who's collected signatures now for 20 years? <coughs> Prior to that, I know you helped your son out. Do you have a number? Years. Is 50 comfortable or should it be higher? 50, I, I think 50 is comfortable. I'm not the type of person to just let somebody take my papers and go get signatures. I do it myself. Okay. To me, even 500 signatures for a mayor is a tremendous amount of signatures. So, And also on that draft, if you would look at it very carefully, the city clerk it doesn't say about any kind of signatures for her either. So I think that should be looked at. Okay. Thank you. Anything else you want to share with us at this time? No, I want to thank you all for all the hard work that you've done because I know what it's all about and appreciate it. Thank you. We appreciate the North Street uh, filming us tonight. Thank you very much for coming on out. Do you have anything you want to share? No. Okay. Anybody else for the public comment section? I think it's 6 o'clock. I have to go, but I want to thank you all very much for what you're doing. Thanks, folks. We appreciate thank it. You. Uh, there was a, uh, several things that were mailed to you over the course of the last three months that we've been working, but the latest that I uh, referred to you to in my memo over the weekend was decision topics. And what I thought we would do, and if people are comfortable with this, is just walk our way through the decision topics to sort of make sure where are we with each of these areas. But prior to that, I've asked Steve and I'll be asking Gail in a minute, but I've asked Steve just to refer, refresh our memories as to what goes in a charter versus what goes in a code or what goes in ordinances, because I reread the charter last night, the old charter, and I haven't reread it, I haven't read it since <coughs> September, and I reread it, and there were a lot of things that I found in there. It's like, oh yeah, that's not a charter issue, that's a code issue. Can you just give us, encapsulate for us, what is a charter? versus what is a code or an ordinance? Mm -hmm. um, well, basically, what you put in the charter is, 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 is basically what you see on this, on this decision point. These are the, the normal components of a, of a municipal charter, as opposed to an ordinance, which is a law, which regulates activity pretty much outside the building, like fire codes or zoning or uh, noise ordinances or dog ordinances and that type of stuff. Th those are laws that if they're violated, you get some sort of sanction. Um, where the 
administrative code comes in, this is how you set up the internal operations of the city. Set up departments, set up boards, set up commissions, tell, tell, tell them what they were supposed to do, how many are on the board, what their terms are, you know, there's a public works department, the police department, the fire department. You set that all up by administrative code rather than through the, the charter. Because if you want to make changes, however slight, in a department, and you put it in the document, you have to go to the legislature to change it. And it, it constantly, it, so it kind of hamstrings any flexibility to reorganize quickly to respond to, to current conditions. So that's basically, in a nutshell, the difference between the three. Okay. And one of the things we talked about in the beginning was to talk about uh, trying to consensus and, and to see if there's a general agreement. And I asked Gail if she would just go over that concept again for us to refresh our memory about how we conduct consensus. And we might have to take votes eventually, but we just want to know, can we pull this off by using consensus? Okay. Um, before I do that, can I just ask, on the decision topics list that Steve gave, there were a couple of email responses from members um, adding a couple of topics. We're going to do that as soon as we finish with you. Okay. So there's a lot of stuff written about consensus um, decision making and running consensus type <coughs> processes. There's no way I'm going to be able to go through all of that now, and there's no way we can really use, at this point in our work, a, a true full consensus approach, because if you're going to do that, you start at the very beginning. It's a long, leisurely approach to decision making that makes certain that every single person's voice is heard again and again and again until people are able to uh, kind of hear each other's agreements and disagreements and, and reach a final decision on, uh, on a series of issues. We're pressed for time, very pressed for time. And so what I decided to do as I looked back over the consensus literature was just take the very last piece of it, um, which is virtually the voting equivalent of the What's, what's as similar in consensus as you can get to voting. And I found a little chart from a guy named Sam Kainer who's written about consensus um, stuff in one of his books. He has this thing called a gradient of agreement, and, and many other people doing consensus work have modified um, this, and so I decided I'd modify it too. I took out one of his gradients. I'm going to just go briefly through the pieces of the gradient, and I have a copy of this for everybody so you can just keep looking at it. This is a way of feeling out every person's um, approach to each issue as it comes up. A person might say, I endorse that proposal. That's called endorsement. A person might say, I, I basically like that proposal, but I have a little bit of problem with it. Another person might say, I have considerable reservations about that proposal, but I can live with it. Another person, this is sort of in the center of the gradient, this is almost like, you know, on a scale of one to five. In the center of the gradient, somebody might say, I don't care. I I'm okay with either way we go on this. And then further on, on the gradient, somebody might say, you know, I don't like this thing, really, but I don't want to hold the group up. I see that the group is, is pushing that way. I don't want to hold them up. Somebody else might say, I have real disagreements with this, and even though it looks like the rest of the group is going for it, I want to make sure that my disagreements with it are reflected somehow in, a, in, a, in, a, in writing. And I thought this might be really useful for us in doing our decision um, topics. Well, no, uh, the, uh, the narrative, narrative. The narrative that, we're, that we want to get the council. Um, and then the last piece on the gradient is simply. So I'm going to pass this around. I'm going to leave it to Dave because you've guided us so well through all these hard topics already. If it feels like it'll be useful, and, um, and if it doesn't, go, go, go about it. I, I'm not sure that we need it. The only thing that, the, the thing I took out was a piece that said, um, I'm, I'm okay with this, with this proposal, but I don't feel like I could in all good conscience, be part of implementing it. And I thought, we don't need that, because we're not being asked to implement anything. And that's really for a group of people, let's say, in a business who are asked to make some big changes in the business and then go carry out the new plan. So I took that down. Um, otherwise, this is um, chaos. Thanks, Steve.
do you want to walk us through the, your topics, or we were going to add to that list of the topics, I think was the, yeah. the piece that we had. Um, I went through and looked at all the minutes. I went through the, my notes. This. Thank you. Yeah. Do you have, do you have any extra copies of that? No, I might. Thank you. I didn't print it. Did you print it either? Yeah, we did. We can maybe <laughs> <well done. laughs> <laughs> Council, I had the presidency and potential vice presidency because that was talked about. And we'll get to that as topics. Um, the Board of Public Works and the fee setting, which had been uh, proposed by Owen and uh, Gene, has now spoken against that. But we still have to bring that up, Board of Public Works, the water and sewer fees. We also talked about adding uh, how the committees are set and all proposed this language to that as well. How the committees are set? How, uh, how appointments, appointments, appointments to committees, so yes. Appointments to the commission. Yes. Who sets agendas at times? There was the question of the, uh, should there be term limits for committee members? Remember Jesus brought that up, that people should, should be on term limits for committees. Then we have the quasi-public uh, boards. The uh, Housing Authority was brought up, Smith Folk, et cetera, and uh, Steve has a proposal of how he wants to deal with that later as well. And I believe that's all that I found. Did anyone else find other topics that they wanted to bring up, Gail? Well, I, I, wasn't, I think chairing the city council meetings and chairing the school committee meetings, I'm not sure it's explicit anywhere. I, I have that in, in my notes, so yes. Okay, and then under elections, the IRB stuff. Yes, and I, sorry, I didn't put IRB on there. Oh, thank you for catching that. Anything else that people got from doing their homework? So basically for the next, four nights, we're going to work our way through this list and work our way, but possibly with this gradients of agreement, but see if we can come to conclusions on this. This will then fuel Steve to write the chart. Okay? He's going to be typing as we speak. When we say we want 50 signatures for Ward 6 or war, I mean for individual wards, that will go in. If we come to an agreement that it's 250 for mayor, then that will go in. You'll be right. <laughs> he doesn't type that fast, but but that's that's the game plan. Is that we're going to work our way through this list, take as much as we can, try to finish around nine o'clock, uh, come back tomorrow until we get through the whole list itself. Everybody on board? And are we are we um, so keeping the topics that we presented at the public forums to to write the narrative for? So each of us should just stay alert. Stay alert, yeah, pay attention, topics, correct. We, we're responsible for writing it up. Correct. Does that work for people? So if, um, so, okay, so if, um, let's say, the first one, the composition, um, is Steve going to say, this is what's proposed, or we, we're not all going to propose something? So, you know, I mean, we have to have a number to start with, or correct. something to go by. Correct. And then we use our little degree. Correct. And we just get one shot at the grade even, right? No. No, no. I, 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 you know, really, we enjoy the process. We could keep coming okay, back. Okay, I get you. Me, but I, I, that's why I'm leaving it So we get one shot. <laughs> <laughs> I have a couple of questions. Please if, do. if there is some disagreement, is it possible to come back to this later yes. tomorrow? Okay. Yes. Um, the <laughs> issue is we, we never talked about um, wholesale changes in the charter to a, um, uh, a council manager form. Um, I assume that's because there's not a perceived mandate. Is, is, are we constrained in the types of changes, aside from the, the practical element of having to get it passed through an election? Should 
should we feel constrained in proposing changes because there's not a mandate to, to make changes? I'm just trying to clarify what our mandate is. Our mandate is to rewrite Northampton's charter, to propose a draft that goes to the city council on Friday. Uh, I think everything is fair game. I think what you heard in public hearings should help uh, advise you. Uh, I think when you've talked to constituents who might have come up and said over Christmas cocktails or holiday cocktails said, gee, you, you know, I think that, that should come back and help you chart your course. Uh, I would be a little concerned about uh, dramatic changes because I didn't hear a lot of that when we came up to public forums. Uh, my understanding was only Wendy who spoke to potentially going to, to manage a form of government. Uh, that was the only person I heard the whole time. Uh, if there were five or six people that lined up and if we got lots of emails in on that. But that's up for you as we go through this to decide whether you want to have that discussion or not and you want feedback from other people here. Okay? So I think I don't want to shorten the conversation by saying absolutely no, 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 but I think that we have to use the recognition that we have five to nine or days and we have to be done. So, five to eight. She's reminding me it's five to eight. I don't think it's five to nine. So. He, he struck down over here, too. He's like, no, I'm never going to get out of here. because I was like, five to eight. I'll be with my mind. I started at 8.30 in Boston this morning. Uh, the first one on the list for those people is the, the topic of the city council. And the second one on the list is the topic of mayor. To be candid, I'd like to flip those because I think mayor will drive the conversation to the council. And under mayor, we have term, term limits, vacancy, appointing authority. Issues around recall come later in this, just so you see. But under term, term limits, vacancies, and appointing authority under the concept of mayor. Now, Todd, if you wanted to bring up and entertain a conversation about um, is the mayor the best form of government, this would be the time you'd want to bring that up. No, I guess my, my question was more, it hadn't come up in previous discussions. It seemed to have been heard of in previous discussions. When you go online and look at Model City websites, it always talks about the camp council manager form of government. We never talked about that, so I assume it's because there's, there's not a real interest in moving that way. But I just... I'm also assuming there are probably other topics that, that we're, we're going to want to skirt as well. Um, that's what I thought was proven. The reason why it wasn't really brought up is because the first committee, this committee was supposed to be guided by the recommendations of the first committee. Now, they didn't have to agree with everything the first committee came up with, but there was no mention in the first committee's report of, of going to a, a council uh, manager form of government. I mean, that obviously would, it would be a huge sea change here, um, that, um, that basically I want to abolish the office of, of mayor of Northampton. And like David said, well, we didn't see a groundswell of people coming here storming the cast and saying, we, want to, we don't want a mayor. Um, so, right there, that's all I just wanted to say. Is there other conversations that area, Gail? I, I just want to ask, in the real world out there, <coughs> is that a form of government that's widely used in cities versus towns, towns versus okay. cities? Well, towns have towns have selectmen. Um, and the manager. The managers. This is probably out of um, out of the forty-four, whatever city. Fifty-one. Uh, Fifty-one out of. Uh, sorry. Um, <laughs> they keep popping up all the time. You know, maybe um, um, you got Lowell, Cambridge, and, Worcester. Uh, Lowell, Cambridge, Worcester um, that have um, city manager forms. Chelsea's got a city manager form. Uh, Watertown, uh, even though they call towns, they're really cities. Franklin, uh, Southbridge, there's a handful that have uh, city managers. But I would say that in city forms of government in Massachusetts, the majority, overwhelming majority, are mayoral forms. It's just the, the city manager form you know, has really caught on nationally back in the reform days, but it never really caught on in, in, in Massachusetts or the New England towns. Um, the 
last city to change from mayor to manager in Massachusetts was Chelsea. And obviously, that was a response to some drastic they were forced to conditions yeah. because of the problems they had in the government before. That's the last city that's changed. The other two towns that changed to cities most recently are Weymouth and Braintree. They both went to mayor, not manager. Um, mass managers so <coughs> didn't like it, but um, it's just it's just in Massachusetts. It just doesn't it hasn't caught on. Um, and I did the chat when, when we did the, the charters last year for. For Holyoke, Northampton, in Everett, there was not even a peep about going from the mayor form to, to a manager form. But they wanted to, some different <coughs> professionalism in, in those cities, and I would propose, you know, a kind of a, 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 um, an adapted city model, which would have a mayor and a CAO. Um, that was a little bit too much of a leap for them too. It, but in, 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 in those places, they did adopt a finance director and consolidated. Department of Municipal Finance, which Northampton has already done. Northampton has been at this process for over a decade now. Little by little, they've been making incremental improvements in the administration of government. And so we don't have to talk about a finance department in, in this discussion because you already have one. And that's how people feel that they want the, the professionalism built in to the municipal finance aspect. Um, and like I said, and, and you guys already have done that. The additional cost of going to mayor and manager as well, because you have two positions in the role of one. And in Worcester, for instance, the mayor is more of a, I don't want to use the term, ceremonial, ceremonial. Uh, but he's there and he'll go and he'll cut ribbons and he'll he open the senior center and things like that, where the manager is actually running the city. And that what we, the salary composition package that we pay our managers in the state is dramatically higher than the salary compensation that we pay our mayors, just so we put some facts on the table. That, uh, we could go in that direction, but there would be salary compensation issues that we would need to also tackle. Any other issues around that topic? Then I'm going to throw something out there that I uh, I like it, having a mayoral form of government. Me too. <laughs> Can everybody live with that? <laughs> Are we all comfortable with the barrel form of crap? Yes. yes. Okay. Hearing no one even go further down that gradient. Uh, you want to go General Assembly in the park? Yeah. Uh, let's tackle the term of the mayor. No, whoa, whoa, whoa. You got to you mayor qualifications. You, have, you have, should take that first, right? Okay. Okay, you want to do mayor qualifications? Yeah, I'm doing, I go down the list. I'm, I'm on this sheet, that's what I was using. Oh, I'm, I'm looking at this proposed, this, this proposed, this draft that I thought we were working from. To okay, if you want to take the mayor qualifications, well, go for it. I can tell you what I did. Yep, go I for went it. through this, uh, this with the uh, understanding that although it's not a draft, it really was. This is what was the skeleton of of how we functioned over the past uh, okay, few can months. Can you point out to everybody the document you're using, just this so we make sure? This is the uh, handout today. Well, it's been revised as of January 9th, but it's this uh, document. Uh, first right the legislative page eight, Thank you. branch, then the uh, executive branch, etc. And he's up to page eight, folks. No, you were. You jumped. You chose the yeah. the mayor as opposed to the legislative. Right. So anyway. Uh, when we're talking about this, we're, uh, I understood that this was going to be uh, the skeleton of what we're going to be working on to, to edit to present. Correct. Okay. So under mere qualifications, I, I read this with a technical eye in terms of, you know, what are the vagaries and, and how could this be looked at and says, what does this mean? And it says, any voter shall be eligible to hold the office of mayor. Well, I think what we really want to say, any voter is a resident of the city of North Hampton as opposed to just any voter. We don't want somebody that... Voter is defined in the definition section, and unfortunately you don't have that definition section. And what does the definition section say? The voter shall be a voter of the city of North Carolina. Resident North Carolina. Okay. okay, well, that, that would help. Okay. <laughs> Where's the definition section? Well, we'll, we'll, I will come up with one once we're done with I don't okay. want to... You know. Okay, so make sure that's in there. That's okay. all. Yep. And 
Uh, the other thing that talked about qualifications was, uh, nor shall the mayor be engaged in other business, occupation, or profession during the period of service as mayor. Uh, I personally am opposed to that limitation on uh, the mayor. I think that uh, if somebody is going to participate in, in another business or occupation and that interferes with their service as a mayor, then they'll be, uh, they may not be reelected. And I don't think it should be, I think it's too restrictive. In, uh, and too vague in terms of what that language really uh, could be construed to mean. So you're recommending we drop losing the second sentence? Uh, no, second, but second the clause. mayor shall devote full time to the office and shall not hold any other elected public Third office, sentence. period. Yeah. We talked about adding the word actively in front of engaged. In the instance of somebody being a landlord or a, you know. My, my concern is that it's too subjective, too subject to interpretation. And I, and I think that what we said is at the beginning is that the charter is just the basics. And we should keep it to the basics and not start to expand on those conditions. That's how I feel about it. I would say that be. Right. On our little continuum gradients of agreement, folks, I've heard two folks who are talking about removing the third sentence, beginning with the mayor. No, no. The last clause of this third sentence. Uh, period after public office. Period after okay. public office. Sorry. Nor shall the mayor be engaged in any other businesses, occupations, professions during the period in service to the mayor. I'd like to hear other people's comments in this area. I, I disagree. I think I, I don't think the mayor should have another job. The mayor has a full time position. And um, I, I liked adding a little clarification like actively, just if they own a business and they step aside. And I realize it's hard to define, but I, I don't think that if you own a store on Main Street that you. Just putting that for discussion, I guess. Um, I, I think mayor is a full time job. You yeah. don't think mayor is a full time job? Yeah. Um, yeah I, I have, um, I think I support it, but it's with reservations because um, I agree the mayor, having a mayor of a city like this is a huge job. It's probably more than full time. Mm -hmm. I don't even know what full time is. That itself is heavy. Um, but Without the language, I think there would be sort of a chilling effect on people running a different business. But without the language, a mayor could argue that they could they could engage in a different business. So I think it it doesn't get rid of all the ambiguity that's possible. Fred, I agree with Megan. I think too that if, if, if I'm going to vote for something, and that's that's the option of building or not, because if somebody's running and you know they have a business. But I, I don't want them selling used cars. If they have apartments or something, that could be different. Some relative could handle it. But if they're actually in an active business, I, I don't, that, I disagree with that. I don't think that they should be. I think they should be a full-time mayor, period. Todd, and then Bill? I, I agree with Megan and Brad. Um, I, I think the um, opportunity for conflict of interest sort of crops up. If you are mayor and someone approaches you, you'd like to start a business. But again, I defer to, to the lawyers at the table. There's a way to clean up that language. I understand your concern about the vagueness of the language. There's a way to clean it up to make it clear and more comfortable with the content as well. Bill? Uh, to agree with Thomas, um, I think we should be careful not to try to right every possible wrong in the world in the term. Um, I don't want a mayor who is occupied excessively with a separate business, but I, I would find it highly unlikely that circumstances are going to arise, and the voters can make the judgment if someone is clearly involved in other activities that they would be a good choice for mayor. If they vote wrong at one point, they could vote that guy out later. Uh, so I agree with the general concerns that people have. I don't know if it's a place for the charter to write that in stone. 
Well, I think if, if we go this direction and sort of leave it vaguer, I'm going to feel less comfortable when we get to the term of the mayor. Um, I think I was sort of leaning toward, or at least open to the four-year term, and so that's going to sort of shift considerations if we, if we basically say leave it to the voters to recall or to vote out a mayor who's misbehaving. Um, that's going to change my, my perception about how long the term should be. So. Yeah. Steve, do you have any experience with more specific language around this or with the charters that permit that last call? <coughs> Um, I've seen, it's all over the map, I've seen charters that don't, that, that don't have this provision. I've seen others that, that do, in fact, but one of the last ones I did was uh, that this was, this was specifically stricken out for the incumbent man, the man that was serving, and the man that was serving all the, you know, several businesses. Um, although, you know, there's no question that he's full-time, you know, it's a family business and he's got the wife running him. But still, he owns you know three or four um, chain type restaurant um, shops, and if we had put this in, then that would have that would have been severely detrimental to the to the incumbent mayor. That's for sure. Um, so we had, we struck it. So, and your thoughts about the word actively being inserted? How, how, how much trouble might that cause us, or, or not? Well, I, you know, I think I think I think Tom is right. No matter what you put in here. It's going to be some, some sort of interpretation. Um, and it, I, guess, I guess what it says, the mayor shall devote full time to the office and shall not hold any other elected public. That that's what explicitly says you're going to hold it, you're going to be full time. So if, you, if you're full time, how can you have another job unless you're working, you know, you're going to be the mayor and being a bartender or a night. I mean, what's the chances of that happening? My concern is more that you could have competent individuals that do own businesses and have the ability to delegate the management of those businesses. And it is, that's active participation in your business, but still have the ability to uh, run the office of the mayor. And if you have language like that, like this in here, it would be, in my, uh, what I think would be would chill that individual from seeking uh, the office of mayor. That that is that is more my concern than uh, somebody uh, trying to burn the candle at both ends. I, I, I think it'd be a chilling effect on potential candidates. Ben? I'm going to agree with Thomas. I just sort of changed my mind because I think that the word I think that there are other provisions around conflict of interest. You know, if we had a mayor that had a liquor business and then you're deciding, you know, who gets liquor licenses, I mean, there's already checks on things like that. I, so in terms of a conflict of interest. And then I think in terms of this, this job is not a 40-hour job. It's like a 100-hour a week job, and it doesn't pay that that well for that type of work. So unless we have a mayor who has, you know, maybe an income source, you know, from family or whatever, I, I think this opens it up to people who maybe also need to have some income stream from, like what we're saying, a, a rental property, they have a book that, you know, they're getting royalties from. I mean, otherwise you're going to get people who you know, maybe have family money and they can swing it for four years or eight years. So I see this as a more, to strike that, it, 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 it levels the playing field, I think. Other comments? <clears throat> I've been persuaded by the comments of Thomas and Bill. I was probably where Maddie was and then it started to move. Um, I get worried about any of the language that we are writing into it. Uh, and I like the simplification of just stopping at any other elective office, period, and letting the voters decide. I understand what Todd is saying, that that might change votes down the line, but at this point in time, I'm more comfortable not including that last clause than including it. I see the problems of including it uh, outweigh that at this point in time. Since there's some disagreement, does this, does this cause for a vote? 
<laughs> we might need to go to a vote. I'm, I'm well, sensing. Go ahead. You moved me to stand aside. <laughs> the, I'll, I'll Just stand on, aside on the as well. I want to clarify I mean, um, something Maddie said. Royalty income, passive income for real estate is not, that's a separate category. Engage in the business. But what if you're in marketing that or something, if you're involved in that? I mean, I, I agree with what Thomas said. Then you're going to get into that definition of actively engaged. I mean, um, you know, a mayor that has a book, for instance, I mean, I don't know. If you, ha if you have a press interview or something, I, like that's pretty active. I mean... Well, yeah, and I, well, I guess the voters can decide um, if that's peeling off too much time from their duties. But mm -hmm. I just wanted to clarify that rent, rental real estate royalties would not be considered, I think, legally as a as I don't active think business. So. I think it's all, it's all, uh, all inter cool. you know, up to interpretation on a case by case basis. The, the other thing that we can do is, is sort of reach a consensus as we go along the individuals that are um, it, throughout this process come back after we finish either sections or the entire event, and again at the end, and go back and revisit, and if necessary, vote. So, uh, in, in the sense of trying to keep us moving forward, right. if there's unless there's if, if strong contention on both sides with, with an issue. Uh, I would suggest we, we attempt to reach a consensus and with the proviso that uh, everything can be revisited and nothing is, uh, nothing is final until it's all final. Okay, you just made my job a lot harder, but that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Keep you may, yeah, but yes, but it may, go, it may go more quickly. Yeah, I understand. Where are we, folks? way people were talking, it sounded like there were five endorsements and three stand asides and we don't know where I don't know where red was. No, I agree. With, I, I'm stand aside too. I'm, I'm not married to it, but, uh, you know, the fact. But. Where's that on the gradient? Not married to it? <laughs> <laughs> but I, was, I think I'd be in the stand aside category simply because, like writing a book for royalties and apartments is fine, but if the person had a grocery store or similar like that, then had his family running it, even though his name might be on it. I mean, those things are every year they're looked at for tax rates. There's so much stuff that can, you know, hey, I'm going to make the public look good in front of the boss, and I'm going to, yeah, it's of worth a half a million. You know, it's worth 400000 this year, so you pay tax on it for me. But the, I'm not saying it's going to happen, but and there's conflict of interest that will take care of that. Right. Um, so I'm, I'm less worried about that piece, and I'm more worried about time commitments. And I go back to, I think, your point about Thomas's point that if if the person's not putting in the extra hours, if the person's not there, the voter will toss them out. And uh, I don't want to make the case for two years versus four years, which is what Tom was saying. But I still am just not comfortable in putting that clause in. And I was was where you were in terms of actively. I was happy leaving that word in. But if we're not even going to have that, then let's get the whole phrase out. Can I understand, what's the current um, language in, in the chart? Nothing is addressed. Nothing. That does not address it. Okay. Can I change my creative? I'll change it so I can live with it. Okay. <laughs> if that helps. Are you there? We're at consensus that I, I believe. I can live with it, but they're not on the facts. I just, I just wanted to. I could have to do it. Okay, so the phrase That's starting, really nor shall the mayor <laughs> be engaged in any other business, occupation, or profession during the period of service has been struck. Okay, term of office, folks. Go ahead, somebody. Bill, you know, two choices, by the way. Two choices. Well, I, I, let me say what I for. Personally, I'm for four. Um, as I said in the last meeting, I'm, I'm a little concerned that putting in four might make it a poison pill for others when it comes time to vote. Uh, so, I do four. <laughs> um, and that's into other people's points of view. I, I mean, obviously, the council's going to have to look at it, too. So we're out of the final word here. But I, I do just want to have us think about if the inclination of the body is required, I don't know that it is. You know, we got a lot of push that way at the last meeting. Um, are we willing to fight for it? Or 
where would it set up to be sacrificed and stripped out by the cows for a while or whatever? Does that have to spin around four. the room? Right, four. Todd? Um, in reading back through all the, um, the feedback, most of the uh, counselors and other people who wrote in were in favor of four. And I was in favor of four, but you know, if, we're, if we're going to sort of structure a, a charter that has checks and balances, um, I think the, the last strike that we did sort of tilts me back toward two, so we're not making a change. So I'm with two now. I think I'm with four. I also have reservations about making a big change. Um, but just in the interest of not constantly running for office and getting a little bit of politics out of governing, um, I just believe in four years for your turn. Thomas? I prefer a two-year term. And I think that in my, I don't, I see that there's the, the running for office every couple of years, but my observation, that in thinking back over it over the years, that's sort of refreshing. It, it makes people talk about what the issues are. It brings the issue, it gives the voters a choice in, in the event that there is um, a need for a change. And over the last, well, since uh, the mayor has become a full-time position, uh, it, it seems that the, uh, the mayors have been there for multiple <coughs> and I never, at least for, again from where I was sitting, I didn't see the re-election process as being that much of a, of a burden. I mean, we're not a huge city. Uh, the mayors know the city very well. The city knows the mayors. And, and so the politicking in, ter in terms of uh, running for re-election, to me, um, I don't know, it just doesn't seem to be that much of a burden. I like the idea of uh, having the issues debated uh, more frequently. Yeah? I, I'm real torn about this one. I mean, in the rest of the world, if you think about somebody taking on a new job, you know, the first year, you kind of have to learn that new job. And then after that first year is when you can really start creating the program that you'd hoped to bring to the new position. And if the if the term is two years, you know, you've got the one year of learning experience and then one year of doing, and that year is cut short by whatever the campaigning has to be. And I'm not convinced that it isn't a, a burden on the, on the um, candidate. I, I don't know that. But it seems that it would take time away from the work of being a mayor. And I, but where I'm stuck is that I agree with Tom on the, uh, about the more discussion there is in the community about issues, the better. Um, I think in terms of pure management thinking, um, I'm in favor of four. Red? I'm in favor of four personally. And <coughs> almost to the person, the people that I spoke to, an awful lot of people, they think four would be good. And I think it would be a positive. I don't think it would be a poison pill. I think it would be on the positive side, not for your turn. Can we just make sure that Three is out because of the, the, the cycle of elections is all off. So we'd have to have, like Greenfield, we'd have to have a spring election. And the reason I raised that is because we heard a lot about three from a lot of people. Well, because people don't, it's nice, it's a nice number. <laughs> at, the, at, the the public forum, at the public forum, we couldn't have the opportunity to say why three was not a great idea. And the main reason be, be, behind that is that you can't set them up for a November election for a local municipalities uh, on, a state election. on a state election year. That's a no-no. That will not happen. Which means you have to then take it off cycle and move it someplace else. And if you're going to do a three-year cycle, uh, what Greenfield did was every May. And uh, so every third day, they have an election. Uh, it's one way to go. The downside of that is that voter turnout in spring elections is much lower. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Bill? Um, just to respond to the issues that, that Thomas raised, uh, I, mean, I think the, to me the ideal situation is that you have a mix of two year and four year. So you have a city council at two year that's getting you know, the immediate public opinion combined with an executive that has the flexibility to take a long review and not be 
as as bound by the immediate opinion of voters. Because sometimes decisions might look better after a few years of it uh, being talked out, implemented. Um, and we don't have that mix right now. We have everybody in two years. Um, so, um, so one point, I think you're still going to have a degree of issues debate at the two-year point with the council elections. Additionally, the city has not been uh, deprived of the ability to debate issues as they as they arise. <laughs> uh, when when hot issues come up, you know, people will come out. It tends to be at the point when they're when they're angry. <laughs> it tends not to be at the front end of the process, and people obviously get frustrated at that. That thing happened at the committee level. Uh, and they're not aware of it, and that's, that's, a, that's a tougher issue to solve. Um, but uh, I think as a general matter that we do get a lot of public input for our, our big issues, and I don't think it's ever gonna, gonna change. One issue that we talked about, I think, uh, was that if we had the mayor on every four years, that people wouldn't turn out, though, for the in-between year city council and school committee elections. Uh, just, that was one of the things, I've been going back <coughs> And I, I could see that slowing down the mayor and also screwing up the city in general. I'm not sure that would be great for the city if government sort of came to a, a shutdown. Well, Remember I that phrase when we talk about recall. So okay, yeah. I know. Right? I, don't no, think I'm just has, to balance I don't think it's black or white, though. I don't think it has to be shut down. I mean, I would even say that when, in, a, in a, not this last mayoral race, but the mayoral race before that, when um, someone barely won, even that seemed to be a course correction. Do you know what I mean? When you get a strong message from the voters that they are not loving what you're doing, I, I do think that that's a corrective force. You can have problems with a two-year mayor. You know what I mean? Just whatever the problem is, whether it's a four-year term or a two-year term, you're gonna have, you can have problems. But they, they only go on two years, so they can be addressed. Yeah, then, then you have the thing where you have the council who can, you know, not shut down government, but they can 
just maybe straighten the course of that mayor out, depending on what the problem was or the issues were. What about the four-year term and um, making the city council stronger by having a mayor not preside? You know, that sort of checks on the time. Yeah, as far as the politics of it goes, I, I would think to the extent that uh, people might not be happy with uh, a four-year mayor term, if you pair it with something else like handing the gavel over to city council president, that, that might make it go down easier. Okay. Huh? There are there are so many other things that we that we're going to be considering, and I I, I question at least with, with the, <coughs> the present function as to uh, the strength of the city council. And if the city council becomes stronger through our, we propose a stronger city council, then yes, that does uh, temper the a mayor that uh, may not be popular. So, in terms of the two to four year, I'm going to step aside uh, position on that. I don't feel strongly about the two year term. It's my preference, and I think it's it's valuable. I'm a problem. Well, that's, again, going back to Tom's original point that if we need to revisit this because of the way the rest of the charter gets shaped, we can come back to this because this is a hot issue. But let's move on to four years and move on to uh, compensation, which is on this list. Where is everybody else? Um, um, I agree. In other words, is everybody else happy with the current Four years, and I also just want to note that Mark is at two years, and we don't yeah, have him here for the discussion, so it's hard. But again, we can't take his vote, unfortunately. We can take his vote. Is he, is he going to be here tomorrow? He will be here later in the week, not tomorrow. Okay, so we'll we'll put that down as a place mark for now, and we will move forward on other issues. Now, again, I was originally going by the decision topics, not by the draft charter, but. Uh, because the decision topics take compensation and stick it down in a lower position. Yeah, it's down the last, last one. Yeah. But if we want to tackle it now, let's go ahead and tackle it now. This is the method. This is not the method. Okay. So I, I, I would These suggest we tackle it at the end because if we, if we restructure government and we have a stronger council president, that's going to require funding. And so that's going to sort of feed into compensation. Okay. Consideration. Taking that, moving forward then on to the extra area of vacancies. And then we also have the appointed authority. So let's just do vacancies ahead of time. The language that is proposed in here, do you want to summarize it for us, Steve? You have, you have two different provisions. One is one is the um, temporary absence, temporary absence, and one is the vacancy. So the two different two different things. Yep. Um, the temporary absence is if the mayor goes, you know, on vacation or something. City council has to has to step in. The controlling words here is unable to perform the duties of the office. If the mayor is, you know. At the past municipal conference in two weeks, and, and, and stay in Boston overnight. That's not unable to perform the duty. So you don't need the city council president to step in to be the acting mayor. This is for this is for a, a, a temporary disability, or if the mayor wants to go on vacation over you know, overseas or whatever, or even in this country, and say, listen, you know, some of them, I'm going to be gone for ten days. Or something. I can't leave the city for ten days. Without so that's basically what, the, what this provision is all about. I want a break from the city. I'm taking a vacation. I am going to recognize the president as the acting mayor. Or I am undergoing surgery which will incapacitate me. That both happened to the last, the last mayor. So I'm just giving you those examples existed. This kicks in that the city council president uh, becomes the acting mayor. Any questions or comments about that? Any rewording of that? The, the, 
we talked about this, I think, a little bit previously. The, what if we have a situation where the acting mayor or the, the uh, mayor is um, unable to perform his duties for a certain period of time, but does not recognize it? Recognize it or does not delegate the um, uh, the acting mayor to the president of the city council? Should we address that in some fashion here, and and or should we have a situation? where uh, either, or the alternative, either by appointment by the mayor of the President of the City Council or in the alternative in failure of the mayor to do so by a vote of the City Council. The mayor is driving to a meeting, gets in an automobile accident. Does this make provisions that the mayor, the City Council President, automatically becomes the acting mayor? Or does the, act, does the mayor have to hand it over? Exactly. It's written in the passive voice, so it doesn't say five and nine, I don't care. But this is not, this is not, the mayor doesn't determine what they do for the office. This is, it's just like, I mean, if the mayor is, you know, incapacitated, how can the person declare that he's unable? I mean, so I think this, I think this, by the influence, the city council just steps in and says, you know, the mayor is unable to perform the duty. But it doesn't say that the city council steps in and says that. That's the point I'm making. And there's when you get a, there's when you get an issue where the city council, you know, may could use this as an attack against the mayor that you know is in Boston for overnight. Well, they could a supermajority. But even if they did that for the temporary absence, the acting mayor would still be indispensably essential yes. issues. So it's not really an opportunity for a big takeover. No way. Yeah. Right. But but what I'm hearing is that there's a passive in here that needs to be what happens if it needs to be in an active voice. It's not clear who decides that the mayor is incapacitated and that needs to be spelled out. Maybe put a line in there that said in the case that the mayor is unable to uh, explicitly announce the incapacitation, I'm really wrapping a wordsmith, uh, the city council president may uh, uh, claim the duties on a temporary basis. Is, is, there any, is there any damage in spelling out like that? I can take a closer look at it, but in my experience, this, this language has never been this is standard language. It's really never been challenged. Right. It would be, I, I assume if the city council president just sort of said, I'm taking over, and the mayor wasn't actually incapacitated, they would say, hey, guys, I'm still here. Right, right. And again, I, I caution everybody that you can't take care of every situation that right. might, might, might arise, because we'll be here until next year. Um, because we can't do that in this document. Um, so I, mean, I, can, I can take a look at what type of language may want to satisfy people's concerns here about who declares the incapacity. And then it just you just put that in there and then someone's going to say, well, then uh, I'm not sure this will happen. You know what I mean? It'll it just keep on snowballing. The more language we add, people will say, well, this could happen too. This could happen too. And, and then, you know, and then you're just in a constant, you know, wordsmithing exercise. So, I mean, I'll take a look at it and we, we can revisit it. That's okay. That works. We're going to move on to vacancy of the mayor, special election, what triggers, what timeline triggers a, a special election. We're up to a four-year mayorship. Where, where does that special election kick in? The president would take over if there are X number of months left, years left, depending on how you decide this, or there's a special election. And the, the draft says if there's more than... 120 days? That's, well, it that's just says X. Okay, okay. My recollection, the comments from the public at the, one of the public forums was that the, unless it was an extremely short period of time, that most favored a special election. And by extremely short period of time, I mean we're talking months. I heard three to four months. Yeah. I mean, that was a short period of time. 
120 days seems like a short period of time. So 120 days, right. Election. Now, 120 days from an election going back, we just inaugurated our, that would be Labor Day. So if the person were to leave Labor Day, the day before Labor Day, there would be a special election. And that, by the time that special election were scheduled, no, it's not the election now. So yeah, this is saying from the state. Making sure that we're on the same page. Go, Tom. So, yeah, you, Labor Day would be 120 days from the new year. Yeah. Um, 120 days from the election would be July 1st. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's going to be from the election to the general election. Okay, so anything after July 1st, would Just the president would stay in place because it's 120 days to the election, give or take. Uh, not to the inauguration. But we're all we we're all understand that. Yes. Tom. Yes, and I, and I don't know where it was stated. There was some language someplace that said in effect that when you have that type of a situation where you have the uh, president city council serving, that the election or at the time of the election, the new mayor would assume. The office, as opposed to waiting until the inauguration, which occurred 60 days later. Yes. Do you get that? Yeah. I mean, let me. I've done. I've done. I've done some kind of thinking about this with with some with some state people. And I think I sent it to to you, Tom, when, when you were doing the, the presentation. Um, it's just kind of a proposal. Um, and just let me read through it, and then we can we can we can figure out uh, <coughs> how. how a vacancy occurs at any time prior to the 18th month of the term, a special election will be held to fill the office of mayor until the next regular municipal election. Now you were then assuming two-year terms? Yeah. This is a four-year four term. Four-year term, okay. But, it would, but it, would, it would, because you could have the mayor elected for another four-year term on the off election year because it's a vacancy. Okay? If a vacancy occurs between the 19th and 22nd month, the city council president would serve until the next regular municipal election. The individual elected, individual elected as mayor takes office immediately and would serve for the balance of the remaining mayoral term, 24 months plus November and December of the off-year election. Okay. If a vacancy occurs during the 23rd or 35th month of the mayoral term, special election held to complete the remainder of the mayoral term. If a vacancy occurs during the 36th month, city council president serves for the remainder of the term. Okay. So that just shortened it. As opposed to four months, it's down to it's twelve months. Yeah. So yeah, that now in, in your proposal, if it's in the third year plus a day, the council president would take over thirty-six the months. The year. Yeah, for a full year. I just feel that the mayor is delegating his or her authority to somebody for whom the voters did not elect into that position should be a very unattractive. Is there a reason? Because on the two year, you use the, the six month time gap, and then on the on the, in the fourth year, you went to twelve months. Is there a reason why you use a different time period in the fourth year? Because in the well, if we if we're talking thirty six months out of a forty eight month term, so anything after the thirty six month. Would leave. Do, do the math. Um, twelve months. Yeah. Either twelve or ten, if you're talking about from the date of inauguration as opposed to. The we were basically. Yeah, saying but the rationale is that if if it's one year or less, <coughs> the council president should serve. If all the voters, if the remainder of the term is more than one year. Right. Oh, we were at yes. forty-four yes. months. We were Good. not thirty-six months. We were at forty-four months. I mean, if we're saying generally that the ideal situation in the case of a, of a current vacancy is a special election as fast as possible. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so if that's the premise, then I would think something along the lines of 90 days until a special election would make sense. And if that's accepted, 
the question is, at what point in the term does that become ridiculous? Right. Uh, right, because after 36 right. months, it's going to take like three months or more to get a special election set up. Right. People yeah. to pull it on page right. everything else. So now you're into the 39th or 40th month. Right. So that's why I would, I would think. And you only have eight more months. Right. So if, if, if you say that, if you're saying that a three month window is an acceptable window to have an election, you can conduct an election in three months. But Kate, are we saying that though? I'm mean, uh, just, I'm not that. I'm not that. Then uh, you would at least want to have a six month window before election day to allow for a special election because that would essentially mean two, two elections, two three month window elections. That would be at least the minimum span after that it becomes, you know, a two month or one month election with it. Um, I think you could push it out farther than that, potentially, but I think that's at least where the basic line would have to be drawn. And, and, and wouldn't the ward from whom the city council president came from have no representation? But for that large during that time as Correct. well? So that's they're double dipping still. They're still, they're still the more on the council and, and as mayor, which, which is the current if, if, if you're the acting, if, if you're the act, if you're the act the mayor, you can't, you can't it vote. It says you can have no other office. Okay. We, you can't right. vote on the city council. That to me is but. another big downside of having that person do that job for which they were not elected for a year. Well, okay. But uh, that being said, I mean it's all about it's all about you know each unique circumstance. I mean, it, it, first of all, it's very you had it you, obviously you had it in the last, uh, and, and so it's fresh in your mind. Mm -hmm. But how many times has this happened in Northampton? Um, number one. Number two is <coughs> the 36 month cutoff. I seem, it seems to be reasonable. You don't want anybody serving that job over a year, but it's under a year then by the time you set up an election and people, you know, to pull out papers and the signatures certified and blah, 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 you're, you're, you're within, you could be within eight to, you know, seven, <clears throat> six to eight months to the election. I so you're really you, I, I you're, 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 you're right. Uh, <clears throat> what, I'm just going to, the comments that I heard from the public was keep that period of time as short as practical. And, and, I think this is, uh, and I think that we should look at uh, uh, how long does it take to set up a special election? I don't know if it's three months, I don't know if it's 60 days. Uh, you have to take out your papers, you have to do what you have to do, and then you have to campaign. And you also have to get the legislators approval well, for a special election? No, 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 not the evidence. Okay. Not the okay. evidence in your chart. Okay. All right, so uh, signatures. Okay, so let's just let's a forty-eight year term, forty-eight month term. <laughs> forty-eight <laughs> month term. All right, you need to pick a month where after that it's just going to be acting to the end. Yes. Prior to that, there will be a special election. How that special election falls is a whole other different story. And then prior to that, you can just hook into a midterm. Correct. 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 But right now, let's just pick, we need to go around and see if there is consensus. You offered six months out, which would be 42. Right. And okay. 90 days to a special otherwise. 42. So Wait, that's... Before you do this, clarification. What is... Let's define the term, because does the term begin on inauguration day? Yes. Because that's two months after your election. Correct. So that's keep, where I was keep, that, keep that in here. mind. But if we're with a special election, there was wording that we talked about where the term would start after the election was certified. So right. you, it would start two months earlier. Have yes. we discussed right. that? Okay. Yes. Yeah. But, I take but, we're, but we're working order. backwards from how long would this person serve? Would he serve? Are we talking about the person serving until so November? Or are we talking about the person serving okay. until January? So, 48 months. Because that's when the inauguration is. Yeah, it's, 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 yeah they're elected, no. I guess. It's no, 46 no, months because until there's a special election. election. If there's an election in November, you, the provision could be that the newly elected mayor would take office immediately. That's okay. correct. Which then gets you to April, May 1st. Right? Six months out. Right. Yes. May 1st. Or give or take. 
person resides on April 30th, there's a special election. person resides on May 1st, there's not, give or take. Okay, that's the proposal you're putting out there. Yes. Okay. Take a spin around the room, see if we have anywhere near consensus on that. Maddie, you're next. So that would mean that the, under that scenario of May 1st, that means that for, so that means then for eight months, they would have a mayor that you didn't elect for no, mayor. Six right? months because we'd only go until November. But then when the, when the proper mayor was elected in November, they too would begin immediately, or they would be? Yes, that's what we're saying. Oh, they, yes, the them. new, that's, okay. That's it almost act like a special election. Correct. Okay, I didn't understand that. Because I guess the logic, there's no elected mayor. Correct. And Correct, so, to replace, you don't want a lame duck appointed Correct. mayor. Right, okay. Um, I guess then I could be comfortable with that then, the six months. The May 1st date? Todd? Um, I, I could be comfortable with May 1st to um, July 1st. I want to just do uh, 120 days. Peggy? Yeah, I was thinking that too. Um, I mean, May 1st is fine with me, but um, just keeping it the way it currently is at July 1st also could make sense. Um, and also, I think we talked about compensation for the acting mayor. Don't borrow too much trouble. We'll get there. No, no, oh, no, no, just, no, no, just while they're acting mayor, if they're acting mayor for a year, you know, that's a big job to not right. pay for. That's, that's I like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm fine with it as long as we're very certain that, um, well, I guess we know we can because the shorter term is now, so we can, that we can mount a special election. Yes. May 1st. May 1st. Okay. You have to make the language work. You said, you don't worry about, about the wordsmith, but you are going to handle it. So we are basically saying, uh, I don't know if you want to use six months out or May 1st. I would say I'd rather six months. Yeah, six months. Here. Six months out what? of the election. Yeah. Election days could change. No, so why, why not say May, May 1st? Days. Why not? Because then you have, it's always May 1st, as opposed to trying to figure out, is it going to be May 7th oh, this year because true. the election is going to be May 7th? It's always May 1st, it's always that day. Before we close this, we're, we're not even there, there yet. But, okay. <laughs> What's the argument against July 1st? Just the, Can in, you mount a special election? In my mind, we're going to have two elections before November. Well, in, okay, so you're going to have an election in October, September, October, and then again in November. Yeah, what's, okay. what's the most ridiculous special election scenario you can come up with okay. based on the rules? Right. Um, so if someone resigns on June 30th, if you have an election in 90 days in the end of September, okay. and another election day in November. So what I've heard, and I believe there's consensus, is May 1st, or are you doing six months? Six months. Okay, so I'll have to change this three to six. That's all it is. To something else. Okay. Six months. Change it from 36 to 42. 42. Okay. No. Forty. Forty. Forty, that's right. Got it. Okay, now all the other pieces that Steve referred to, how you would bring in the special election if it's after one year. Everybody's comfortable with what you said before, correct? Where it would catch on the... Correct. The, 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 off, the off year. Also at or, that six-month point. It should be the same time frame. I don't know. Yeah. I, I can't conceive what the not what the. It's time different than what you wrote. I just yeah, want to make yeah, sure that we're on the same yeah, page. In the first two-year period it shouldn't serve for a year. I get it. So I'll, I'll, the months have to right. correlate. Correlate. Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And or just, a just special election case. We, we have him or her uh, only serving out the remainder of the term, even if it's in an off-year cycle, not running for a full four-year term. That's correct. Is there any reason to just, if you're going to have an election, just do another four year? It's going to throw your calendar off. Because it's going to throw your election cycle off. Because then you're. You that's might have special to, But that's okay. I mean, it's just. Because it's, just, it's every two years, and so you'll just sort of skip a beat and then carry on. I hear you. Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's something to think about. Okay. In my mind. Uh, and then there was the, the, the 
the piece of special election triggers automatic uh, swearing in mm -hmm. at the two month wait. Okay. You getting that, Steve? Right again? The swearing in. Yeah. I mean, the special election results are certified, swearing in. Correct. And okay. even if it's not a special election, it's right. the normal election, but you have a temporary uh, mayor serving. Once the mayor is elected, Correct. the mayor takes office immediately. Correct. Correct. So you will have that, that language in there. How are you today? Everything going well? Okay. Uh, do you want to pick up the compensation issue? Because that's also not in here. Does the, 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 yeah, the president, does the president who's now going to be serving for potentially six months as acting mayor, should that person be compensated at the mayor rate, payroll rate, or at the acting president, or the president rate? Um, and they're, and they're keeping them on the council? Excuse me? And they're not keeping them on the council. They'll just be mayor and that's it. I think that's the way it should be written. Right. And you give up, you give up your Councilor representation because you no longer have a councilor. So if that's the case, what's the argument against being paid like a mayor? You're the mayor, and that's it. I think I think the temporary mayor should, should get the mayor's compensation. I, I think that's if you're giving up a job, you take another job. You take compensation. I don't think it needs to be. <coughs> oh no, I think in this town that that to me needs to be written down because that was a hot topic this last election. Right. Everybody assumed that, that David was now getting Claire's salary. But also, in the current charter, he did not give his council seat. He was still a councilor. He still voted council. Right, right, right. Well, you have a unique situation is that he was the president of the council, and he's also presiding on the council. And that's the only reason that issue came up. Now, if the, if, the, if you decide that, that, the, that the mayor comes off the council, that probably is not going to be an issue. I mean, in my mind, I mean, and I know the politics of this stuff, but, you know, if David left the council and the acting mayor's seat, he should have cut the mayor's salary and not the council salary. I and mean, that should have been a no-brainer. But that needs to be spelled out in the charter. I mean, did he, did, did, I'm sorry, did he not have the right to It was salary? not, the charter, the old charter, my understanding is the old charter was not clear in that specification. I mean, so charter, that's why this charter needs to specify that. I feel very strongly about that. Either we, yes, they do or they don't. But either way, it needs to be specified. So I'm dumping that in your lap. That's going to be under Section 3.9, vacancy and Right. Not under compensation. No, correct. Yeah. Correct. OK. Correct. OK. What if the President of City Council says, <coughs> I cannot take this job? Is there a provision in here that says, in essence, that the council can elect among its members? If you want, it, I can put that. Well, I'm just asking because if otherwise we have uh, we have a gap. Correct. If we don't, if we have talked have... about a vice chair, would it automatically that be the vice chair's role to do that, or would it be what you're specifying is that they would take a separate vote and elect somebody? Because you well, certainly could have a city council president who could turn around and say, "There's no way with my full-time work that I could give that up." And be a temporary mayor. I mean, if you're currently a city council president, and we say in the charter, you are the mayor at that point, and the person says, well, I can't do it. Right. I mean, uh, can't be council president. The only, way, the only way you could not do it is to not be council president. Well, so they, they, I mean, they could resign, and right. you're right. still in the same situation. You could, you you could, don't have a, you you could resign the presidency. What's that? You, you, you could resign the council presidency. Or if, if you're saying that he has to be council, that he has to be, he or she has to be mayor, right. They said, okay, I'm mayor, I resign. Right. And, now, and you're still back in the same situation. Right. I mean, there's a, they could get through that. But, but, it, or, but, in, the, but in that scenario, you would, you would lose, he or she would lose everything. Right. Um, well, or the, the council president could say, I do not want to take the acting mayor, right. but I want to retain council presidency. 
Well, I'm suggesting that you don't, you don't, you don't get to have your cake and eat it too. Uh, well, I don't think it's you could say, you could say, you could simply say if the, if the council president is unwilling you know, or unable to serve, that, that the, the council shall elect from, from among, among its members a person to be acting there. Okay. Uh, can you stick that in? <laughs> yes. I can look at that. Can I add one thing? I'm sorry. Uh, just because I have to leave at 7 o'clock, yes. and my topic that I had covered in the community forums was whether the mayor should preside over this. That's where we're headed next. But. Okay, that's all I'm saying because I want to take a narrative note for that, yeah. so I'm sorry about that. Okay, let's open up that can of worms. <laughs> Well, the two best arguments I heard against switching was, is the, the, the Jim Dostal, Jim Levy argument that's going to screw up the agenda if a part-timer has to do it. And there's the Pat Doggins argument that's going to screw up the internal policies of the council if it becomes a, a power position. Um, uh, I am, I, from what you said at the last meeting, the mayor is going to have the right to put stuff on the agenda regardless. So I think that solves the first issue. Um, Pat Goggins' point I find a little bit more theoretical. It could be bad, but it's hard to know. Uh, I, have, I have a little hesitation writing something in stone that's hard to fix later. Uh, so I don't, I don't love the idea. But it is, but considering that, you know, Mayor Narkowitz is for the switch. Four mayors for the switch. Most of the center we got was for a switch. And if we're going to go four years, I think we got to pair with something that curtails mayoral power. So it's a balanced proposal. Uh, I, I think we can do it without, uh, hopefully, uh, upsetting the, the harmony that generally exists in, in city government. Huh? Um, I actually had cocktails with some neighbors on this topic. They asked, you know, what's the big issue? And I thought this is going to be the biggest issue. And surprisingly, they all thought no change should happen. And they thought if you change it, the council meeting is going to drag on. There's going to be no information. I spoke with um, Paul Spector about how, we're, how is the council going to communicate with the mayor just to get informed. And he said, I don't know how that's going to work. So that's a, a, an issue that I sort of need some clarification as to how that exchange of information is going to take place with the open meeting laws. Um, another concern I had. Um, was about the staffing requirements, the additional costs required, are we just sort of growing government, and how does the city gain from, from this expanded bureaucracy, um, uh, along with the, um, the other points that were raised about dynamics. Um, <coughs> I can go either way with this, but before I commit to the change, I'd sort of like to understand what the change is going to look like. Megan? I could sort of go either way. Um, my inclination is to have the mayor not reside. Um, I believe in a separation of, of the powers, but I did absolutely hear what um, everyone had to say during the forum, which was, you know, it's not broken. Um, not everyone said that. Uh, Pat Goggins' this point that everything seems to have worked fine, why change it, um, did make me think. Um, I don't feel very strongly either way. I think that Bill makes a really great point that we need to weigh the four-year term. I think that's the biggest thing going on in my head. So I'm leaning towards Mayor not as I Fred? I agree. Uh, totally. I like it. But um, I, most of the people who I talk to, I talk to city councilors who served back in the 70s and 60s. And to the person, they said the same thing. They thought it would, the separation would be correct. Just. And what Pat said, it's, you don't know. And, and if who's the other guy that you said that you talked to there, um, back there? Yeah, Paul um, Yeah. I mean, it'll function. It'll, it'll work. It's, it, it always works itself out. I mean, don't, that almost sounds like he's, he doesn't know anything that's going to happen. No, I think the, the concern that he expressed is that I think the, the current concern is that council members are kept in the dark and they're not well informed about the things they're voting on, the mayor can sort of step in and sort of railroad things through. His concern, I ask him, well, how are you going to get informed by the mayor? Are you going to have to go to his office and sit down and have a discussion? Or how is that information exchange going to take place outside of the council room? Because um, otherwise, if you've got the mayor in the room all the time, is the mayor going to like to have to sit there and you know, be 
called to speak on every single issue? That's I guess that's where I'm going to get confused. Well, the, the, the new president of the city council, I watched the thing on Channel 2 the other night or whatever, on Channel 12, mm -hmm. and he's going to meet with the mayor constantly. Boy, he made it sound like he'd meet with him once a week, sit out. Yeah, that doesn't matter about meeting a lot, it's just the two of them, right? Correct. Well, not, not at all. I mean, I mean, this is how it works in every yeah, other mayoral exactly. city in, 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 in the country, yeah. um, except for Taunton. So the mayor doesn't have to sit I mean, back. The mayor right? sits and calls every council. I know mayors that sit with every councilor, you know, every week or calls up and says, hey, guys, an important vote coming up. And the mayor's going to sit on the phone and call every one of them and say, this is what I need. And this, well, this is why this appropriation order is in. And, you know, and the mayor doesn't have to show up to every meeting because, you know, then they sit there. I know they, you know, the mayor that told me I went to the meetings and, or, 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 or a council saying the mayor came to every meeting and he just sits there for no reason. So... You know, there's a split. In most most forms of mayoral forms, the mayor does not go to the council meetings at all. And, but if there's an important issue that the mayor is presenting, he's going to come to the council meeting and, 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 and make the presentation. Or if it's just a, like a, a simple um, a transfer of a thousand dollars from one account to another, the mayor's going to send the finance person. He's not going to come for. To the well, for a thousand dollar transfer. Well, I guess my concern is a lot of talk about transparency, and as a citizen, I get a lot of information from watching those Thursday council meetings where the mayor is sitting there answering questions, and information is exchanged between the council, the mayor, and the population at large. And what you're saying now is that all of this information is going to be exchanged in phone calls between the mayor and council people. To educate correct, correct, correct. The, let's, let's, let's drop back and take a breath for a second. Because theoretically, the mayor is running the meetings, but is not supposed to be commenting on the meetings. Yes. Okay. Our previous mayor, and the previous mayor before that, and the previous mayor before that, took a little bit more leeway um, and would enter into discussions. Theoretically, they're not supposed to. They're supposed to run the gavel, just like the president of the Senate or the Speaker of the House. Whoever has the gavel, you're not supposed to have opinions, you're just supposed to make the, make the trades run on time. That's the function of the mayor currently running the city council. That's by the way. I, I, I understand that, but the, the fact of the matter is, is that council people ask the mayor, the mayor tends to respond. As a citizen, I sort of like that. That's where I get my news. I understand. We're talking about moving to a system where this is all going to take place pretty much behind the information sharing is good, not going to be able to take place in the public because the mayor is not going to be in the room. It's happening now. Okay. happening now. Okay. But you have to, on page five, take a look at page five, paragraph C. Which, of the draft. Of the draft. January 9th, 5, Yeah, January 9th, 3. Draft. Well, the city council, at any time, they request from the mayor specific information and request the mayor to be present. I mean, this is a little bit um, uh, limiting because it requires us to answer written questions. But it could be a more informal exchange of information, and it could be, I don't, I'm assuming that it could be, that the mayor could request to come to a meeting and inform councilors on a particular issue that's coming before the council, or that the council could invite the mayor to do that. I would like it to be written both ways, where if the mayor sees something on the council's agenda that the mayor has special knowledge about for the city, that the mayor can say, you know what, I really got stuff I really want you to know about about this issue. And, and we heard that from, from people. We, we heard people say that they want more open information. Well, that's on page 12, line 9. Okay. So I'm not, I'm not so sure that the mere change of who runs the meetings mm -hmm changes how much information the mayor could give the council. Tom, do you want to weigh in on doing this? I perceive the system as the mayor being the chief executive officer, the chief executive person in the city, and the council being what to me that term implies, advisors and consensus uh, makers with regard to important decisions. I, I I prefer the mayor running the city council, chairing the city council meetings, and being there. 
<coughs> what Todd is saying, and, I, and to me, this is, uh, this, I think that this is the heart of it. The mayor is the individual that has the most knowledge. As Casey said today, it's Monday, and I've already got 10 hours into this. And unless we're going to change what we're expecting out of our counselors, and I think that that comes with compensation, and I think that comes with the defeat of the charter, uh, I, I don't think we can put that burden on the council and have effective management of the city. So I, I, I would like to see this, the mayor there in the same role that uh, the mayor has taken over the past uh, several uh, um, incumbencies. Good, another topic that we have to discuss. <laughs> <laughs> sure. So the way you frame that, you, you, you talked about the council being sort of an advisory arm to the mayor as opposed to a separate branch of government. I, I don't see the council as a, um, as a, quote, separate branch of government in the way that, uh, in the way that things, the way that power flows, in the way that decisions are made. I mean, the council is there and it can come up with proposals, it can come up with its resolutions, but really, where does everything come from? Yeah, I, I'll agree with Tom. Where does that like, come from? Really? Yeah, well, I mean, where, where, just, where, where, does, where does the direction of the city uh, the implementation of uh, of what is of how government is is uh, run and managed in the in this city. But managed and come from are two different things. Well, right? okay. Well, maybe they are. But from what I'm that's what I'm saying. Okay. I mean, the mayor is the chief executive officer uh -huh. in the city, and I think the mayor has to it has to be there. I mean, that, that's just sort of the way. I, I but that. I think the mayor should be taking direction, if anything, that it should be flowing from the legislative branch. Yes, but because that's just... Because the legislative branch represents the people, and that's why they have fast election, and that is an information flow that then informs the mayor how to most efficiently run the government. I, I don't disagree with you. If we have, if we're going to change what we're expecting out of our counselors, that's fine. I mean, but that's what I'm saying. I think that that means that we're saying our counselors are going to now take a much more uh, involved, active role in in the, the implementation of policy in the city. Well, that's what I clearly heard from people, that that's what they want counselors who are big enough to do that. Yes, but then are we, are we prepared to say that they're going to be compensated to do that? Perhaps we are. I well, just, and I'm saying if that's where we're going, I think that that means defeat for the charter change. Mm -hmm. I think that's, uh, I don't know that that would be well received. Which part? Money. Money, paying Money counselors, uh, excuse me, how do I turn this thing off? <laughs> Throw another crowd stamp on a four times that Is there clarity in the law or in the way other places perceive these bodies? as to whether the city is kind of like a mini country uh, with an executive and a legislative branch? Or is Tom's view of the, legis of the city council as an advisory arm of the executive? Well, the city council is pretty much, I mean, if, if, the, if, 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 the, if the mayor you know, um, disappears and, and, and goes out of office and, and, and there's no mayor and everything's crumbling and there's, uh, the city council is the is the is the be all and the power of the city. The city council appropriates money. The city council enacts ordinances. It's you know, it's though the city council enacts the budget, the city council authorizes loans. It has tremendous power. It's a different branch of government. I, I don't disagree with that in theory, but I think Tom's point, from my perspective, is that in all practicality, we're a city of thirty thousand people. Most voters want you know, potholes filled, the government to be efficient, the, the schools to work, and it's, a, it's, a, it's run like a business. And so it, it, sh it shares qualities of government, this ideal form of government with separation of powers, but it also has to be run efficient and like a business under constraints. The mayor in his uh, inauguration speech talked about the fiscal constraints. I agree with Tom, if we're gonna be expanding the role of the council, 
um, they're going to need to spend a lot more time and, and will require higher compensation, uh, probably a different skill set than they have now to really tackle that job. Um, and I, I don't, I, I, separation of powers is important, but there's a functional aspect to government that I think will be lost if the mayor is not in the room. And I don't think, when, when this discussion came up at the forum, um, David Murphy said, oh, we'll just make the mayor, you know, come to all the meetings. And David rolled his eyes, and that's going to create, <laughs> I saw this, like over my dead body, I'll do that. So I, you're creating a potential for, for tension. I think the mayor needs to be in the room, but are you going to require him to be in the room to, to inform people? But see, I feel personally, I mean, I just elected a city council person who I think is fully, fully able to do this job. So I think that if there is a perception among people that there's a bobblehead council who doesn't do their homework and they've been enabled in some way by a, a super mayor, you know, then let the change start, I say. I don't think it's so much a super mayor, it's what Gene was saying, and he spent well, 10 it hours. Well, a super mayor, according to what Steve says, in terms of an overview of what other people have. I mean, it's, it's a more powerful mayor than what other people have. Do most councils sort of act as like a corporate board and um, sort of description of sort of advising and approving and acting as a check on the executive? Or are most councils fully independent, out there doing their research, creating laws um, on their own, separate from the from, from the mayors? The latter. The latter. Okay. Now, the information flow. I think I think it, what's going to happen, is, you know, whatever decision is made yet, the information flow is probably not going to change very much. Um, councilors, city councils are supposed to, you know, enact ordinances, come up with ordinances. And, and active city councils will just say, okay, I'm going to sponsor a noise ordinance. And they go out to another city and they figure out, and then they, they write the ordinance and, and, uh, and, and, and they champion it. And they do the work. And other cities, you know, if the, if the, if the mayor will propose an ordinance, um, which will all be in the public, in, in, a, in a public discussion. But um, I think in, in, I think taking the mayor off as chair is not going to change much on, on the information flow. The problem, I mean, one of the problems here is, 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 is as David just said, um, there could be a, a, a situation where the mayor is sitting there and can't speak because someone wants to invoke that rule. And when it's on television, it looks like the mayor is in agreement with what's going on, but they don't understand the mayor can't speak. It's, it's awkward. It's very awkward. Yeah, if the mayor is the chair, if you're de facto, if you, yeah, and you can't speak, which is theoretically the way it's supposed to be run, not the way that it has been run. <clears throat> okay, so we're at a moment of considerable change in this city if this charter goes through. And it's an opportunity, I think, to create um, our 30,000 person democracy the way we'd like it to look. And, and if <coughs> it looks like the way the founders of the country set up the division of government, um, it will be a complicated um, system because we see how complicated our, our system of government is. But it requires the people who want to be involved in that government to gain the very um, hard to gain skills of being that kind of governors. So for example, legislators have to learn how to legislate, and legislators also learn have to learn how to how to cooperate with the executive. And the executive has to learn how to lead, but also how to cooperate with the legislature. And we see gridlock in Washington. It doesn't have to be that way here if all the people that we elect to these positions can learn these skills. But I'm reluctant just to say, we've done it this way all these years, and it doesn't really reflect um, the way a democratic government ought to look. I'm more excited about saying, we have a chance to change this right now and demand of our elected officials that they gain the skills to make a workable government in the branches. 
Bill, I'll take one more comment, then I still want to spin the room again. Go, go. Just to do what Gail's doing for a second, sort of pull back and, and sort of ask the question, what kind of government do we want? And I, I tried to ask uh, one person this at one of the public forums. Uh, do you want a government that is, I mean, both, I mean, both views are democratic. I don't think one is dictatorial. Uh, but like one that puts a primacy on efficiency. Can, can this government do things? Can it take action and solve problems in a quick manner? Uh, and that might mean you know, uh, you know, fewer uh, checks in the process that slow things down. Not none, but fewer. Uh, or is having as many points possible uh, for input uh, is that the primacy at the risk of having a more inefficient process that slows things down. The federal government is designed to be inefficient. It's designed to be difficult to pass legislation, which has its merits, although for certain problems it's not all that great. Uh, but you could argue it's the test of time for, for several hundred years. I, I think a city is different than a country in that respect. I think a city, um, you want to be able to solve problems as fast as you can. Uh, so I'm reluctant to, to to do changes in the charter that are going to disrupt the ability of the city to, 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 to function efficiently, which I think it does right now. So I don't take very lightly the most of the arguments that curtail mayoral power because I worry it's going to make the government more inefficient. Having that this one, uh, I don't think it's so dramatic that it's going to upset the ability of the government to make decisions. Uh, the, the, the mayor's still going to have uh, a fair amount of power uh, to set the agenda and to make the case to the public and to <coughs> execute ordinances. Um, but I think it does sort of come down to, uh, you know, what is, it, to, what is the vision of, of, of the city that you want? I want one that can, that can take action. Uh, but I think we can do this. And that's part, part of the reason why I like a four-year mayoral term, and if it's easier to do that by switching the gavel over to the city council president, I don't think we disrupt things too bad. <coughs> okay, let's take this reverse spin since you were just speaking. Uh, preside or not preside, and where do you fit on the gradient? Tom? I'm going to say I like it. Preside. The mayor presides. Okay. Side, where are you? Uh, I guess the inside, but I agree. It, it's tough to. Can I ask a question? Sure. Um, instead of just going right to that, um, since Northampton and Taunton are the only two cities that still have their mayor presiding, um, and you know, the issue that we seem to be hitting um, if we take the mayor off the city council is um, growing government and the amount of responsibility that city council then have. In other cities of the same size, it seemed like on the materials that we got that they were, that those city council members were compensated sort of comparably to what Hampton still, even though they seem to have more responsibility. What's no Hampton now? Five. Uh, so so it's ten. 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 Oh, ten. ten. Ten is okay. the uh, reality. Okay, so that would be the, okay. And do you have any idea of staff? Um, that would be it. Most city councils have full time staff. I'm still leaning to it um, should the mayor preside, um, stand aside. 
as my answer to should the mayor preside. And that's stand aside. I'm um, Pat can live with it, but I actually am in favor of um, the council running the, the whole show. The questions I have, I, I know I'm, I'm reluctant to embrace change until I understand the budgeting implications and all the sort of details that come with this. I, I, for those of y'all that read through the notes, Bill Dwight um, sent a, a letter to the committee expressing his concerns about making a change. And there, there are a lot of good issues that he raises. So I would suggest maybe this, we could discuss this later and come back. I think it's going to be the big issue. Um, I was surprised in the feedback I got who people thought this was a bad idea, who I assume would have embraced um, this sort of change. Um, so I'm just concerned that people will look at this and say, why are we making this change? Everything runs okay now. Maddie. Wow, I strongly think that the mayor should not preside over the city council. So if the proposal is to keep it the way that is now, I'm at flock. That I got that a clear, clear message from those here, and everybody but maybe two powerful people said, please change that. And then even at the last one, our current mayor said change it, and our previous mayor said change it. So. Between that and then everybody in my neighborhood, you know, I, I just, I can't abide that. That's fine. That's what we're trying to figure out here. Bill? Uh, I would agree with reservations to give City Council President the gavel. I would stand aside if the view of the committee was to keep the gavel with the mayor. <laughs> Make my job hard. <laughs> well, I, what I heard was I was the only one who was in right. favor of Ask saying, the question backwards. Yeah. 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 I was the only one in favor of keeping the uh, status quo. Okay, so let's go. Let's go through it one more time the other way. <laughs> the motion is because you have to write this up, Patty. I just want to make sure you're clear on it. Yeah. I don't know if she's going to say she's going to write it up. I'm confused. Right? I that <laughs> the city council president, our proposal will be that the city council president here to for with, or whatever, <laughs> chairs, presides, runs the CC meetings. I don't like it, but I don't want to hold up the group. Yeah. I endorse it. I like it. I endorse it. Uh, stand aside, but I'll shift when I have more information. I like it. Agree with reservations. Okay. I think we have consensus on that issue. That we are moving towards the president of the city council chairing city council meetings. What is that in the draft? It's new. If it's not, it's not in the draft. It's not in the draft. It's, okay, what section? Uh, well, the roles of the city council will be coming like, into the discussion the powers? where okay. the powers of the city council, the city council president for that. It's in here. Okay, I was looking for the mayor's. No, because all these things of the mayor that we did not tackle, that we had later in the agenda, but I will bring it up now just so we get Maddie on all of the mayor issues. Term limits. I actually didn't have term limits. No, 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 but I'm just saying cover it. Let's get the mayor done by your ear. Okay, thank you. Term limits. Red, why don't you start us off? I think uh, if it's a four-year term, two, two terms would be good. But I don't know. I, so one of the speakers there said your term limits are the elections. So I, I guess no term limits. So your bottom answer is no term limits. No term. Gail? Same, no term limits. Tom? 12 years, three terms. Three terms. Uh, generally against term limits, but I think as a way to smooth the four-year term proposal, I think a three-term three, three term limit is acceptable to me. Yeah, term limits. Huh? Uh, I'm opposed to term limits, but, okay. No term I strongly and would veto anything that had term limits. <laughs> <laughs> How strong I am on this. I do not believe the limits at all. Can't, I can't stand by it. So, where are we, folks? We and have two who are speaking towards three, ter three years. I think we're the only two that had any favorite bullets towards it. Are you, where do you fit on the gradient? 
Do you feel it's an absolute thing we have to kick around some more? Where I'm, much of what I'm saying has to do with having a document that's going to be accepted. I fully get that. And, and that's where you can come in as well. Yes. And I, again, I'm looking back historically since I've been in the city, and I can't think of any way it served more than 12 years. No, it has. Yeah. And so to me, that is not an unreasonable statement. And then I think of, and, and, I, and I really don't know it, to be able to comment on it, but I, I think of a uh, situation where you hear of individuals serving as mayors of communities for 15, 20 years, and you just wonder, what are they doing there? I mean, are they doing anything that's new or innovative? And I can't imagine that it would happen, but I, I do think that there should be an effort on that. So I'm going to say I'm, uh, I would like more discussion on this issue. I think we also could, if, if the general sense of the room is to not do it, uh, we don't have to formally recommend it, but we could say as an aside, uh, uh, as a way perhaps, if, if you want to do four-year terms, but you're getting some criticism of the public, a way to mitigate that might be to also include some kind of term limit. I think yeah. the rationale might also say, look, we already has been, that, that if no mayor has ever served more than 12 years, we have a couple of folks on the, on the committee suggesting 12 years. They're simply suggesting what's been historically real, which kind of makes it well, not necessary. You know, if, if over all the years it's never exceeded 12, then why do we have to worry? My concern is that when you start the concept of term limits and you accept it, then it, it can get out of I mean, you either have to be completely against term limits or you accept term limits and they have to figure out what's the right year. And if we said, you know, uh, three years, the next group could say two years. Terms. Two terms, excuse me, two terms. Uh, and if we have term limits for that, do we have term limits for the city council, for the school committees? And what Jesus said about having term limits <coughs> for our committees, I just, we open up a door of saying, the limited time you can serve in government is X. I get nervous about that X because that X can move up and down. So I just, that's where I come from. I just, I just don't like, <clears throat> if the voter doesn't like me, throw me out. I don't want to, you know, you've been there long enough. I, I think, to be real candid with our mayor, and, and she and I talked about this at great lengths, I think Claire could have been thrown out this term if she had run again because the, the people that have, have, have had it. And we saw that in the last election. And that could have happened. I don't think term limiting her would have been a way to achieve that goal. I think voting her out would have been a way to achieve that goal. I'd also, it's possible that in an attempt to pair these two things, you might just anger people on both sides of the argument. You get the longer term people mad, you get the anti term people mad, and you lose everything. So some people will really feel very strongly about the subject. Steve, you want to just address it? Address the, how this affects the administration of government. And, and there's only two cities in Massachusetts that are term limits for mayor, and it's Massillon and Lawrence. So, um, what, what, when I've talked about term limited mayors in those two cities, what they say is, and it's two terms, so eight years, what they say is what you're essentially creating is a six year mayor. Because the mayor loses control of the bureaucracy, and in state government, um, uh, it, it negotiates with state government because they're going to be out for two years. So, I mean, this one particular mayor said, I mean, you know, I had projects going on with the state, and they just said, well, we're not going to do anything until, you know, until, until the next mayor comes in. The bureaucracy knows you're term limited, so you're losing control administratively of the, of the bureaucracy. And that's kind of the administrative effect of term limits. Never mind the philosophy, but the, philosophy, but the practicality is that that's what you, that's essentially you're creating. Term limits first came up when we started limiting presidents. And it was the response to FDR serving four terms, or what was uh, three in a, a year. Then the people who supported term limits turned around on a dime and wanted Eisenhower to serve a third term. 
They then went ahead and wanted to have Reagan serve three terms. And they all were trying to change that amendment process. I think putting something like that into the charter sets a precedent that you can limit that. And I think that the voters should limit it. I don't think it should be artificially limited. So I just, I, I strong, this is one of those, the two areas of the whole charter where I'm like, I don't like that direction at all. Well, Steve's comments are more persuasive to me in terms of uh, reason for not having term limits, that you don't uh, put someone in that position who is perceived by others uh, of, you know, uh, you know uh, just being effective in the future and nothing that you have to, nobody we have to listen to. It's actually not even putting the person in that position, it's putting the city in that position. Right, now. exactly. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, with, with that, with that said, I, I mean, it certainly is not a strong uh, issue for me, at least not for the city. And I understand. I've listened to all the people who came to the public hearings. I've listened to the forum. I've read the notes of people who are here, and I, I fully, fully appreciate that. But I just, I'm, I'm passionate about this, and I, I, I don't think it's good government. Can I just throw out a, a question I had? Um, Bill Dwight talks about his opposition to term limits, and he, he says these problems should be addressed by review and revision of election and campaign laws. What's he talking about? Um, do you have any sense of how you could generate more participation or deal with the incumbency issues um, through campaign laws? I assume when he's saying he wants to generate more participation. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I think he's speaking more abstractly. If, if, if you have a problem with government as it is, you know, the solution is not in, in, a, in a cruel tool that is anti him, the anti-democratic. We try to think about ways to include public participation. Generally, I don't think that paragraph speaks to a specific okay. proposal. Sorry to be as passionate as I am about this, but it's just a big one for me. Um, other folks want to weigh in on this? Do we have a consensus? No term limits for the mayor. I believe that concludes our areas of the mayor. We're, we're going to punch in there. Yeah, we're going to punch in there. We have an hour left. Let's see how well we can weigh in on the city councils. Uh, the going back in the agenda the correct way. So uh, as far as the narrative goes, uh, I believe I did the presentation uh -huh. on composition and terms. Uh -huh. So I'll just be doing that part. I would not be doing vacancies and confirmation powers, correct? We'll talk about it. Okay. I mean, it's fine if I am. I just want to know what, what notes to take. I just keep taking notes for the whole city council. Okay. okay. Uh, compensation. Bill, I mean, uh, Tom? No, I wasn't going to comment. Are you talking about the mayor compensation now? No. I, compos composition was the... <laughs> opposite count. Okay. Going back, going back to the mayor, did we deal with appointing authority, or is that some a future time? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is that that? Do you want to do that then? Yeah. Okay. Let's go ahead. I was going to... We, 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 can, we, can yeah. get, we can get to that also as the city council confirmation powers will they confirm. I mean, either way, we can address yeah, okay. that. Okay, let's do it now. I mean, okay. Okay. currently okay. it's the mayor's. I mean, this would be a change. Correct. Correct. And, and, it, and there was the recommendation was to change that the city council would have more power, so I was going to address it there. But I hear you. Okay. Anybody want to tackle this? We had recommendations from uh, city councilor Owen and uh, Jesse. Uh, that there needed to be increased uh, participation of the city council in the appointment process. You saw language drafted by um, Owen. I'm trying to find the language. I typed it, I typed it right here. That's what I think it is. In all cases in which appointments are directed to be made by the mayor and the alderman, I don't know why there's a... No, that's, that's, that's the old, old language. Section. 
In all cases in which appointments are directed to be made by the mayor and the city council, the mayor shall have the power of nomination, which nomination shall be subject, however, to confirmation or rejection by the city council. The city council shall have also the power to nominate, which nominations will be subject, however, to confirmation or rejection by the city council. Any qualified voter may also be nominated for an appointment with 50 qualified signatures, which nomination shall be subject, however, to confirmation or rejection by the city council. There are three ways that people get appointed. Uh, they get nominated by the mayor, the city council, excuse me, three ways that people get nominated by the mayor, the city council, or this uh, 50 people voter, and then they, uh, it does not talk about it going through the committee on appointments, which is what I thought it was going to do. Does anyone understand how this would work in terms of competing appointments from the mayor versus the council versus people There would be a second name or a third name coming forward, I would assume. For instance, right now, the one name comes forward. Now there would be potentially the city council might nominate the same person. So the city council endorses the nomination of the mayor. I don't think that they would go around trying to, to draft a alternate just for the sake of drafting an alternate. But, but they I, have, would have the ability to draft an alternate. But currently they, they approve the appointments. Correct. Um, and and if they decline, it's up or down, and the mayor would, if it's a, if it's a down vote, the mayor has to come back with another one's up or down. Correct. But this would propose a parallel track where they could appoint or nominate someone in competition with the. Right. With the you could even have three. I mean, right? Or it would be the council as a whole put one forward. Correct. The, the council. The council, I think, has more powers than it's currently realizing, because I think that the council can also uh, support and endorse a nominee and send it to the mayor for consideration. We have an opening on the planning board that's going to be coming due because the, we know of a vacancy. The city council could meet, have the committees meet, send a name forward and say, we hope that you nominate this person. They have that ability. They just don't. Isn't that the way it works? I mean, that's why I'm sitting here, I think, is because... Okay, does, this apply to, does this apply to employees? I mean, they, they, can, they can appoint a, 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 a police chief? Wow, that's a good one. <laughs> I slope or slope. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, the way it's written now, I mean, the council has confirmation power over every appointment uh, of department heads and multiple member bodies. That's every board and commission. So they already have, the way it's written, they have confirmation powers in rejection. If they do it within a time, they can't drag it on and drag it on. They, they have to act within 45 days if the appointment becomes effective. So they don't you know, hold, hold anything out. But to Todd's point, they could continue just to reject the, reject the names until one came up and it was favorable. Right. In, in most cases, what happens is you don't want people publicly embarrassed. And, and the mayor's going to submit the name of you know, uh, Joe Jones to be on the planning board, and, and it gets like a rejected overwhelmingly. Most of the time, when, when, when the mayor submits a name, normally the votes are there. Because the mayor has to do with his homework, his or her homework, and he doesn't want to publicly embarrass somebody that wants to, you know, serve the city. So, I mean, that's, that's the, how it really works, the dynamics of it. You know, um, and if somebody, if, if the mayor, you know, if, you, if you're going to uh, uh, hire a police chief of any municipality, it's a big process. They do assessment centers or whatever, and you know, by the time the police chief's appointment becomes, it has to be has to be confirmed. You know, the, the mayor's not going to put forward a name that's not going to get confirmed. That's not going to happen. It's, it's because this person now is, has become a finalist. The person's name is public, and you know, jeopardizes his job and where he's working before. So I mean, it's different dynamics now. Um, so I mean, uh, I, I can't see the. the any mayor proposing an appointment that's going to get rejected. I mean, it's just not going to happen. But they, they have the ability to do it, still. <coughs> but normally, that wouldn't, that wouldn't happen. What is it about of, uh, of the council being able to uh, identify a potential appointee? I, I personally am not in favor of uh, an appointment by 50 members of the public submitting someone's name. That, I think, uh, not for a city, but uh, the thought of the council itself 
of pointing someone. I, I thought it was interesting. I hadn't really thought about it until someone mentioned it earlier. I, I think it was at the forum, one of the forums. But um, are there any, any pros or cons to that? I, for me, it seemed like it would. It, it gives a little bit more power to the council. A yeah. lot more, I would think. Well, they can appoint department chiefs, and then. The no, but well, I think well, we have to separate yeah. out. I think for the, for the points yeah. of discussion, let's separate out employees yes. versus commissions, task force, etc. Yes, I just. Yeah, I'm not paid talking positions that, and non-paid positions. I think we need to separate out because there's a different dynamic. There. Yes, definitely. I, I'm sorry, I wasn't yeah. talking about employees at all. But uh, what if you have a mayor that uh, chooses not to appoint someone to a board or a commission because for for any one of a number of reasons, and there's a vacancy on that uh, board or commission because without the appointment, there's a a balance one way or another in terms of the decision making on that board. And it remains vacant for a long time. Or it remains vacant because the mayor knows that a particular project is coming up and there are five members on the planning board that are in favor of it. I don't want to take the chance that somebody gets appointed who's not in favor of it. Now, what, one of the other suggestions that I had heard was that the we put out there, we have these vacancies, and again, I'm talking about for committees, not staff. That you put out there, they have the vacancies, and the committee of appointments reviews the people who apply, that narrows the list down to X amount, and sends three names up to the mayor. The mayor chooses one to nominate and sends it forward for a full vote. The mayor gets to make the, the final but not the final, but the narrow vote, if you will. That was one other suggestion of way of handling it. So the city council gets to play, they get to narrow, they have a job in terms of taking a look at the full range of the candidates. They choose three. The mayor might say, I don't want any of those three. Say no, send it back to the committee. They have that prerogative as well. But they would have three people uh, to do it. How does that sit with well, I, I think I think that, again, this you're mixing executive and legislative. It's the same principles. Um, the council has rejected an approval and rejection to all of these appointments. Now, the mayor was elected citywide to perform that job, <coughs> presented a platform, or presented a campaign. And they, and this is, these are his visions. And this is how he's going to carry them out. He has to carry them out through boards and commissions. And again, if, if, if somebody's, you know, Making a vote that's com completely contrary to what the mayor was was elected to do, then the mayor has every right not to reappoint that person. It's just that this, this way it should work, because the mayor was elected on a citywide platform, and he and he needs to be able to carry out his agenda. If you, you're going to handicap that by taking his appointment powers away, can I just add to that? Agree with it. Um, one, it seems, this seems like a non-problem. Uh, two, other conversations I've had with other counselors suggest to me that it's not even a council-wide desire to have this happen, though if they want to, they can obviously stick it in after our job is done, they so chose. Uh, but the bigger concern of mine is, is this going to make the process you know, debilitating? Um, where it currently it is not. Uh, I mean, the council has a democratic authority to reject appointments if they don't like them. They have an appointments committee. They vet the mayoral appointees, uh, and they can send them back. They generally don't. That's because the mayor presumably is doing a good enough job with the initial appointments. And the only thing that this proposal seems to accomplish is to uh, complicate the process by inserting nominees at the end of the process and not at the beginning in a, in a, in a, in a bigger public way with bigger opportunity for public embarrassment and a, and a disincentive for citizens that you want to participate in the government, yeah. so I don't see what the value is. Well, well, that's a little bit where I was going too. I mean, it seems to me that if the city council knows people who would be good in any particular position, they can encourage those people to submit their names right to, the mayor, recommendation. To, to the mayor. They don't have to do anything. If, if people, don't rec people don't send up somebody's name without the person's um, agreeing to do it. So if the person's agreeing to do it, they can submit their own name to be considered by the mayor, and that's the same whether it's coming from a city council suggestion or from 50 voters in the city. And 
And I think the efficiency to um, is to have that line of authority that the mayor takes a look at everybody who wants to be considered, makes an appointment in the city council. Is now, am I biting off trouble here? Is there anybody who's speaking to the issue of allowing the city council to have appointing authority or to uh, intervene in the way that Owen has suggested? Is anyone speaking to that? Speaking in favor of it? Speaking in favor of it. So I'm leaning back and just thinking that the more the consensus is, leave it the way it is. That the mayor has the authority and the, the city council has the ability to say no. Are we all on that page? I don't want to spend a lot of time on this <coughs> if we're all there. Right, but a narrative, it, it, just to address um, this concern, the narrative ought to um, talk about encouraging citizens to come forward to submit their names to the mayor. In, in other words, if that's his, you know, if that's what he really cares about, getting people active in committees, that's where the effort ought to be to encourage people to. Bill, you write all that down? Oh, this, this is me. <laughs> Let me just address Tom, because Tom, Tom brought up a good point. It's like what happens when there's a vacancy, um, and the other issue is is the, is the classic holdover issue where people don't get reappointed um, when their term expires. If the mayor does that, technically he or she would be in violation of the charter. The charter says when a vacancy exists, the mayor shall fill it. And when a term expires, the mayor shall fill. So you don't have a situation where people are like held over for years and don't get don't get re reappointed. So that takes care of that. Well, yeah, but just because it's mandated doesn't mean it's going to happen. Somebody has to enforce it. Exactly. Going to enforce it. Not one. Exactly. And you know, so probably you know, it's the case in a lot of these communities. But at least it says it in here that you know. Technically, you know, it, it, someone could say to the mayor in a public forum, I mean, you know, you, 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 we have vacancy on the planning board for six months. What's You're going violation on? You're in violation charge. of the job. You know? I'm working on it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. But, but alternatively, if you, if you had a clause in that allowed the council to step in, then that would give them an incentive to vote down nominees so that they could then put their person in place. Yeah, but they could talk to them. That's a favor of... I'm neutral on, on what uh, uh, Owen was proposing, but I just felt it was an interesting concept and that it did deserve some discussion because it, it's different than, than if we're talking about change and if we're talking about giving more power to the council, this is a way to do it. And if we're talking about giving a four-year term to the mayor, this may be something to mitigate that. And, Again, just opening it up for discussion as opposed to uh, advocating for it. Okay. So we have struck a clause under qualifications. We have agreed to four-year terms. We have agreed to no term limits. We have agreed that there would be a kick-in under six months for vacancies. Then you're going to draft the language and get back to us. And we're going to keep the appointing authority the same way. Is that a good summary of what I mm -hmm. make sure that we're all on the same page? Going back to this uh, document that's been circulated, we did have discussion early on about um, uh, there was something <coughs> about it. Let me find it if you don't, if you don't mind. It's section 3.3, I believe it was, under appointments by the mayor. Okay. Oh, let me find where that is. Page 10. Yeah, line 23. Okay, page 10. Uh, uh, it's page 10, line 5. All persons classified as department heads shall subject to the consent of the mayor appoint promote discipline all assistance. We discussed that at one of our earlier meetings, and I thought that we did not like the possible ramifications of that language. I'm sorry, could you repeat? The uh, it, it's on page 11, okay. start, starting on line 5. Yep. All persons classified as. Yep. Okay, everybody see the language we're talking about? Well, basically, what it implies is that a department head. Um, 
He has to go to the mayor before he can discipline anyone, appoint anyone, promote anyone. And, and it could lead to, uh, it certainly can lead to a lot of nepotism on the part of, uh, of the mayor in, in a situation like that. Is that the way it is now? I don't know. I don't think there's anything like well, that. Why is the language right included? Do you remember this term? Because you have to put some provision who appoints employees. And, you know, it, it, uh, yeah, but pointing, we're talking here, it says discipline, right. promoting. Discipline, promoting, and, and all that stuff is, is very litigious, as we, as we know. If you do the wrong thing, you get the city in a, a real mess, and it gets very expensive. So I think the mayor has to, because he's chief executive officer, should say, listen, before you discipline this person, there's a process in the collective bargaining agreement that has to be followed, and you know we get lawyers involved. And, you know, but isn't that what our department heads are for? I mean, we have, I mean, we have sophisticated professional department heads. Department heads shouldn't be able to call a lawyer without consent, without the consent of the That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about disciplining somebody. But, you, you, but before you discipline somebody, you should have legal advice. I mean, because well, you, know, you, 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 you have a personnel department, you have. Uh, which is, which is appointed by the mayor. Okay, but that's different. I mean, that's different than the mayor doing it. The mayor's only could do miss, right, such sentence. I'm not comfortable with that language at all. Okay. Uh, I mean, I, and I think that it, it really, uh, it, it's micromanagement by the mayor in everyday affairs and what, it, it, I think we should, should look at it and uh, consider what the possible ramifications of that are. Do you have alternative and I, wording? What? Do you have alternative wording? Or are you talking about removing the clause altogether? It certainly needs to be tempered. I, I don't know about removing it altogether. Well, the, let's just jump, jump back and get the, the fact. The concept of a discipline, promotion, or whatever the third one was, appointment. Is that something that should be in a charter for staff, not department heads, for staff? I think that that's what jumped out at me was I didn't see how that rose to, I could see department heads rising to the level of the charter. Staffing patterns, disciplining patterns of staff, I don't see why is that a charter issue. That's more of a code issue how you run your department. Okay. I mean, again, I mean, striking this clause is, 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 is really not, it's really not going to affect much because all this stuff in the collective bargaining agreements gets the mayor anyway. So we can, we can strike it. But the, the effect, the collective bargaining agreements, the grievances uh, clause always ends with the mayor anyway, making the final decision. And the mayor has to, in civil service, the mayor has to sign the appointments. Well, we don't civil service anymore. But there's still a process because you get a special act exempt exempt the police and fire. <coughs> but how do you get that special act exempt the police and fire without returning okay. something to But them. again, my point that I'm just trying to, to help Tom out here is that I don't see department heads is a different topic, but people underneath that, the rank and file staff people, I don't see are a charter issue. I don't see how it rises to be something that should be in the charter. And addressing them in any way, shape, or form is something that I would question charter wise. And that came from our conversation back in December. We talked about I that. totally agree with what you just said. How you phrase it is perfect because it shouldn't be. Otherwise, like you said, there'd be such micromanagement. The mayor would. If there's the always would have to be so, so, it'd be crazy. Yeah, would have to be so expansive yeah. to cover all the collective bargaining issues and everything else would have to go in there. If you open that door, department heads is a different thing. Right. Rank right, and file should be in there. I'm, I'm okay. Okay. Take the phrase out. All persons classified as department heads shall, subject to the consent of the mayor, appoint, promote, discipline, assistance to other employees of the agency for which the person is responsible. Go on. Okay? So I take care of the mayoral issues, just to make sure that we, we're all there. We have 35 minutes left. I'm going to the now in 35 minutes, but I'll take 35 minutes. Uh, let's start waiting in on City Council. Bill, you're taking your notes like crazy, right? Yes, I am. Okay. 
I didn't hear any changes or any discussion about composition. I don't think I didn't hear anybody saying we should change from seven plus two to anything else. Did anybody else? Yeah, there's a new mark. Oh, school committee. I oh, is it school committee? Yeah. <coughs> yeah, sorry. Any changes to the city council? Moving forward, we're going to keep seven and two. That's the consensus. Hearing no opposition. Term of the city council. Right now, it's two years. Let's throw that out on the table as a discussion. Should the city council either ward and or at large be expanded beyond running every two years? Who wants to weigh in first? Red. Well, I know some people thought that the councilors at large might not be a bad idea if they ran on a four-year term like the mayor, and then the regular city councilors has two. Yeah. And I, I don't think that's such a bad idea. Um, because they are running citywide and it takes a lot more of an effort to do that, just as if the mayor. And you're probably going to get your council president out of the at large person anyway, probably. Probably. Other discussions? Yes. Counter to that would be you create, you're creating two classes of, um, of council members. And feedback I've gotten about that is that would kind of mess up the dynamics on the I don't know if there is a sort of a hierarchy now, but the concern that I heard from council members is you don't want to create a hierarchy with a four-year term here and a two-year term. Um, I dream like four years for at large. I don't think there's wide sentiment for it, so I'm not pushing hard for it. Um, but I do think if you did four-year terms and you staggered them and you only went for one at large at a time, it would be a less confusing election of people. People have a tough time with the idea of voting for two. Uh, you get, there's, I mean, I, I happen to know this because I was involved in one of the campaigns this year, but, uh, you know, in 2009, the percentage of, of bullet votes was 56%. It got down to 41% this, this year because there was a concerted push. But even that's a pretty big number, and I think it speaks more, like it speaks by partly strategic and partly confusion about what you're voting for. So if you could stagger that, I think you would alleviate that problem. But having said all that, I don't think... I'm already lost it to put the four-year mayoral term, so I don't know if we have to push it a lot. Ben? I'm thinking two-year term. I kind of like the way it is, um, especially with the mayor going to four-year terms. Uh, but I'm, I'm okay. I've not heard anybody. Tough? Yeah. Two-year terms. If we were to go to four-year terms, I think it should be standard opposite the mayor. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. I don't have a strong feeling about it. Two years fine. Okay, we're all at two year terms. My, my read of that consensus. Something I want to toss up that sort of circles back to the four year term is if the mayor is only running every four years, the off year election is going to be less. Yes. So that, that would sort of play in if we were to go to four year terms, maybe having the open at four would create more excitement for the, the off year. When the mayor's not on the ballot. Gotcha. Is it hard to ask a city council member to get to four years? We had talked about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big, it, it is a big challenge. Especially it. Well, we, we, I think we just agreed to two years, unless we're going back to that conversation. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just, just want to make sure we're on the same page here. Term limits to city councilors. You know where I stand. <laughs> <laughs> you're not going to do it for me, you're not going to do it for the council. Right. Or if we do it, everybody does it. I mean, everybody gets it, which I think is bad government, but I don't think you just pick the mayor out because we haven't liked the last mayor, which is, to be really candid, and I know the camera's right on me, I'll smile, <laughs> but a lot of the people who got up and spoke towards that issue were specifically angry at Claire. And I don't think that that's how you form... Uh, your bylaws, your constitution, be on, on a specific personality and what just happened. I think you've done a what's good government. So it's either, you know, everybody gets term limits or nobody gets term limits. Anybody else want to weigh in on city council term limits? The really easy narrative so far. Anybody? Are we all that there should be no term limits? I don't want to make that assumption without okay. seeing nodding heads. No term limits for city councils. Filling vacancies. 
We have a proposal of how we fill the vacancy for a mayor. I assume we would use a similar filling vacancies for the city council. Only it will be on a two-year cycle, not a four-year cycle. So should, the, should the, the time frames be a little different, or does it still work to have 90 days till special, six months, uh, you keep it? Council breaks in the summer. Um, it only be once each month, I believe, until I once in August. Go ahead, Brad, you had your hand up. Yeah, um, how did it work when Angela Plasman left? Um, what was left, because it wasn't, it was pretty short term. Owen was, yeah. he, Owen was elected and became immediately city councilor. Yeah. That he had to run again. Election, he had to run yes. again. But it was very, it was a summer election, wasn't it? It was I mean, August, I believe. Uh, yeah, uh, so that's like. Right, so so here's a situation where, I, I believe the current law is, there's no, uh, it, 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 there's a point where the seat just remains empty. Six today. months, probably. Um, uh, so I guess this was just outside that window where Owen technically had to run again. Oh, he ran out of post, so no one really noticed. But he, but you know, the 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 person who lost or someone else could have jumped in and said, "I'm going to challenge you after being in there for for three months," and, uh, which is a little awkward. The um, language that we have here talks about vacancies in the twelve months. It's different than the language. So I assume you will adjust this to match the barrel language. And you're talking about a six month period. Am I at the right ballpark? Yeah, like I said, I guess my, my question is, this is actually a little different than the mayor, so excuse me for being terrible. Uh, with the mayor, if, if the mayor's, if it's, there's always someone who's gonna fill the seat. There's always gonna be a city council president or right. vice chair ever fill right. the seat. Um, with, the, with the ward councilor, or at large councilor, the seat's just flat empty. Uh, so, is there is there an acceptable window that it can remain empty if it's too close to the election, uh, or isn't there? Isn't the same problem if it's if it's too close to mount a special right. election? Right. I can't mount a special election. So, are we saying that if it's within a six-month window, that seat just stays empty? Suck it up. That must have been when Ray LaVarge died. They never replaced him. Right. They had no special election. Right. I can't remember. Right, when, and the, the, theoretically, the two at large were supposed to step up to help yes. extra to extra Ward Seven, yes. extra City Council. And if I remember correctly, you were supposed to call the two at large at that point in time, which was Michael and I believe Jesse. Je no, it was it Jesse? Mm -hmm. Whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. David. All right. Michael and David. They're supposed to call Michael and David to do whatever Ward Seven business would be come forward. Yeah. It was late August. Thanks, Mary, for jumping in. So, six have you, months. Have you, have you read the language that's in here? You talked about 12 months. It just seems very more language in here than necessary. What page are you on? Seven. It's, you know, to me, it's, it's one of those if there's less than six months, there would be no special election. If it's more than that, there'd be. And it just seems like there's a lot that might grow. Well. Oh, do you want to just keep it the way it is now? I mean, this is a little bit more. Well, I don't fancy a little, little right. more creative. The, the reason I don't like this one, I remember now, is you take the second place person in order, and I, I totally disagree with that because I, I we, the times we have had contested ward races, the people who have been number two and number one have had such diametrically opposed positions to all of a sudden, just because one person is not there anymore, to accept that as a majority vote doesn't work for me. So I think there has to be a special election. I don't like taking number two. So are you, are you okay with the way, the way it works now? Yes. Okay, so we'll just keep it the way it is now. And it is. Is that 90 days? Well, I think it's 90 days. I, I, I would, my suggestion would, 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 would mirror the bit, the, 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 mirror the bears. Yeah. But on a two year cycle, okay. yeah. that we keep consistency here. We don't have a, a different tact. So whatever the bears is, mirror it. I had a question about compensation in this section. Uh, 
in your annotated draft, um, you had a clause about expenses B, and it's, it's not in on page three. Compensation and expenses. You've got A compensation that used to be in your annotated draft of B on expenses. Did that drop out somehow, or that's a, that's a lot because I don't know how that might happen. Okay, because it's just a it's a one sentence clause that says subject to the to appropriation, the council members shall be entitled to reimbursement of their actual and necessary expenses in the performance of their duties. And then you have a note. This is a sub substantive change. Current charter says members shall receive no other compensation. So, I think you're reading from, uh, that's not my draft. Okay. That so I think that you're was Mark's, from, uh, Mark's, Mark's annotation of um, yes. and his suggestion. Yes. Okay. Oh, for the, oh. Line, the minority yes. report? His minority report. Yeah. Right. That's exactly what I Oh, this came from the minority report. That's okay. the minority report. So, so he's saying what happened to the current? He the annotates the current. Correct. Okay. Yeah, the language is so similar in this that I right. thought it was the same that you were making comments on. No, on how it was different. Okay. Okay, so there's no pause then on expenses. On expenses. Okay. okay. On page eight, it says paragraph C an error or yes. is the whole thing an error? Yeah. Well, it, that was one with the alderman? Yeah. Yeah, then you can come out. Page eight, line, line 13. 13 to 20. That, that whole thing's coming out. Just those. Yeah. Okay, good. Okay. Just to circle back around the compensation yeah. and expenses, why is there an A if there's no B? Because he has to clean this all up. Okay. That's his job. I'll worry about that piece of the floor later. So we have solved vacancies. We are moving forward on confirmation powers, multiple member bodies, employees, whatever that means. Do you want to take a shot at any of that? We have 25 minutes left. Yeah, let me just cover that ground. Is there something else here? Huh? Can we cover that ground? With I sort of thought so, but I just wanted to make sure there was nothing else that we had to cover there. Thereby, City Council, a compensation, composition. You can tell that I started the day off at 8.30 in Boston. The City Council composition will stay the same with seven uh, ward and two at large. For the two year term, there will be no term limits. Vacancies will be filled on a similar schedule to the mayor's, but based on a two year term. Uh, the powers of uh, appointments will be uh, the same language as it currently exists. They get to veto. So, not it. David, I'm sorry, you're going too fast for me. Where are okay. you reading? I'm reading off of this, this decision topic, so I'm just okay. going down that list again to make sure that we're on the same, the hot topics that he raised, which is, does not necessarily match this. Okay. We can go back over this just to make sure as well. But within the draft on confirmation powers. <coughs> yeah. That's what I want to make sure that we're coming on. Is that appointments of the city? I'm not. Is I that hear page you. six? Or? Yeah, it should be six. Yeah. And what is on page five, appointments of the city council to be determined? What does that mean? That means who the city council appoints. I mean, we don't know. I mean, I don't know who they appoint now. Oh, appoint yeah. for what? To positions. Like, do they appoint their own staff? You know, and how do you know, what, what kind of, what kind of, what kind of, what, what is their power of appointment? Who can they, who can they, do you know, well, we better find that out because we only got a couple of days left. Mary probably knows. As employees, that's it. That's probably just just her. But this discussion will come up when we talk about the city clerk. That's why I put a placeholder. Okay. So okay. could you? Uh, I, I do have a comment. If I can find it. On the city council confirmation of certain employees appointments, page six. Yep. I'm looking at line twenty-six. Yep. I think the city council may. Uh, should be city council shall refer the standing subcommittee. Okay. And what about shall make a recommendation? And shall make a recommendation below that, that's correct. Or, or is there anything later that says if they fail to it becomes a thing? Yeah, 45 days. 
So May is correct that if they haven't done it in 45 days, the appointment is, comes into effect? Is there a wording that says that? <coughs> Case that the city council doesn't act, the appointments come into play. Is just tying their hands that they have to send it to a committee. I know the judge had the committee, but could there be some circumstance where it's like, oh, we screwed up here. We got five days left if we're to make a call, and I got to route through a committee before going back to the full council. Are we? Are we potentially? putting the council in awkward position if by dictating they have to go to committee and they, they can't jump the step and go to the full council if they need to for time reasons. Far away trouble. That's why there's got to be a reason why it's a committee is because of timing issues. Are you passionate about cleaning that up? I'm not passionate about Seattle. I just brought it. It just seemed that that was. Is there a lot of chance for this? I don't think it's mischief. I, I think that it's just, you know, sometimes you just, and especially in the summer when they're recess or whatever, and it gives you some power. It gives you, it gives you some, some, some room in case it's up. So are the two shells there or are the two shells gone? Is it bay or shell or both positions? Well, it's definitely May in the latter one, okay. because that because it's taken care of in later sentences. So it's just the, the, the question is if you the question is are you are you ordering the council yeah. to some sense of the committee? posting in right. 48 hours and, you know, and, 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 and do it that way. I mean, that you mean it's either way, it's not going to you know, cause a, a lot of disruption. Has it been formally adjudicated that shall means you have to? Yeah. I know it's been an issue over, over the years. It's just a word of art. People are going to take it. Right. Tom, where are you on it now? I, I think it's appropriate to be in there, but it's it certainly is not strong. I just again, I'm just reading this technically. Yeah. And I've, I've covered it so I'll just let it go. Pointing things out that I think should people should be aware of what it is that we're recommending. I had a, another question about special meetings, more of a technical one on page um, four, uh, line eight, um, causing a notice of the meeting to be delivered in hand to each member of the city council. Is there a way to modernize that and maybe include an email alternative? Um, someone's on vacation and you know they're not going to be at home, they're not going to get that notice. And Mary, how do we handle that? Right now, how do we handle that? Yeah. Yeah. Basically, email and uh, I thought. delivered in hand to me email? No, I'm just saying you call a special meeting when some people are on vacation, take a note to their door where they're not there, and give, that's give, giving notice. And had they known about a special meeting through an email, they might have altered their plans. I, I just think to, to update it include at least an electronic notification attempt. We can just say give notice. You don't have to specify the meetings. But I think that's a, I think you probably do have to specify the meeting. Do you see where they're at? What's your feeling about Um, let me check the door because it's probably an open meeting issue here yeah. some, somehow. So let me let me just recheck it. I don't think it's going to be. I don't think I don't think it's going to be disastrous to take it out. Um, no, I mean you can leave that in, but I just think maybe adding, adding an email, <coughs> adding, email. adding an email would that be okay? We can then, yeah. Because I understand that you know you have to deliver the letter. And, there again, does it, do, does it actually get, in the special meeting, does it actually get delivered to everybody by email? No. It doesn't? No. Never did? No. No. Not okay. Okay. I, I, all right. I think you 
using the, the term email uh, may, may uh, not be appropriate sometime in the future. <laughs> and, yeah. Whatever. Yes, I, I don't know how. how you Maybe we just to give notice, and then you know the rest of it's all to me. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You know, <laughs> in the Actually, same, the the same paragraph where we have was a call by the president or any blank number. Oh, blank. Yes. Yeah. yeah. What the yeah. number? Now that we've three. said they're going to be three. Three. Comfortable three? Yeah. Three it is. Okay, and we're talking about giving notice. We're putting the word three in there. Again, this is starting with line six. Under where the two I's are. It'll be three members, and that will be each member will be given notice within the timetable of the 48 hour, weekday hours. And you're going to clean up the language that says hand delivered mail or whatever. Yep. yep. Cool. Other there's comments a, in this area? Go. There was also some place in here where we talked, we had the discussion about someone convicted of a felony. Yes. And I believe that we, as we talked about, we did, my sense was that most of us felt that a prior conviction should not prohibit someone from. Uh, running for office. Now, where would you find it's, that? Uh, where would I find Page it? two, line Probably. 23. And then we came that if you're convicted while in office, then you need to be But if you have prior conviction, that that should not uh, prevent you from. So on that page, yes. I mean, that people understand what we're talking about. Yes. So you took, put, take, put a period after vacated and take the rest out. Well, the first on the period side, vacated, set office. Period. Most well, of the first sentence would have to go. Line, line 23 to 25. I would say any counselor who is convicted while in office is finally convicted of the state or federal felony while in office shall be deemed to have vacated said office and remove the first sentence entirely. Correct. And remove the, the and okay. shall be okay. disqualified. Okay. Right? There's no need for the last half of that right. sentence. Right. So, so it's any person. counselor who has been who is convicted, who is finally convicted of a state or federal felony while in office, shall be deemed to have vacated said office and shall be disqualified from serving. Do we have that under, no. that under mayor? Yes. Oh, well, just mirror the language every way. It's because it's the school committee, it's the mayor, everything that counts. You'd have to drop that last clause, though, wouldn't you, to be consistent and shall be disqualified from serving in the other elective? You're saying that they should be qualified, so they would just it's the vacate and leave it at that. That, that was vacate. Yes, that, that, that's what I'm comfortable with, and I and I'm not strong about uh, future service. I was more concerned about something that was in someone's you just in the past. Yes. So, under felony convictions, let me read what I have to make sure we're on the same page. Take out the whole paragraph, basically. But you start with any counselor who has been finally convicted of a state or federal felony while in office shall be deemed to have vacated said office. Period. Period. And I think you told us that finally convicted means before. Yes, yes. If, we're, if we're concerned about that, we can take out the word finally. The judge and the lawyer don't know the difference. <laughs> 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 we're we're just the just a lot of just a lot of Okay, so the word finally could come out or should be in there? I think if you take that out, it, it uh, can't be a little bit convicted, right? Yeah. Okay, take the word finally out as well. 
Okie dokie, pokies. There's nothing else on the council. You can carry it over. And then just the added, the added stuff. Do you have some compensation at all? President C. We're, we're, we'll get a circle back to compensation as the last thing on our list. I have to fill in a couple of X's here. This is on on quorum, page 3, line, uh, uh, line 22. Quorum would be obviously the majority. This is sticking with set, uh, 9. Yep. Is it a majority of the members or a majority of the present members? The presence of X members will constitute a quorum. Okay, oh, but is it is it five or? Yeah, okay. Five. Five. X members shall be required. Sometimes cities require um, more votes for the corporation or whatever, but it doesn't matter. To me. I thought we we as a city required two thirds there for appropriations. Two-thirds is how many Six. So it's five and six. Okay, well. Okay. Uh, yes. Uh, if, you, if you have a quorum of five, then arguably you can never have uh, a vote on an appropriation order. Correct. And is that, is that Correct. what you want? Correct. Well, be up, that's how it is now. Both okay. five and six are in current law, current charter. Current charter. And, okay, and that's what we want to keep. Right, and, be, and the appropriation was that one step higher. You could still have five and get all your ordinances or anything else passed, but it, because it's an appropriation, because it's financial, it moves to six. <coughs> Is that right? Well, so actually with a quorum, you have to do three. three. All you need is three if there's just five to make a quorum, and all you need are three votes to, to do the pass a measure regular business, but for appropriations you need six in the affirmative. That's how I'm reading this. And that's the way that that's the way that I would read it also. Mm -hmm. Okay. At the bottom of page one are the terms of the president and vice president of the council the same two years that they are serving for They serve for the two years. You only elect them once, and yeah, they serve for two years. Okay. Now, do we have vice president in here? That's on my list. It is in there. Mm -hmm. It is in there. Okay. Yeah. So they're electing a president and a vice president. Yeah. Where is that? Just so I know where. Not on page one, line twenty. Over to two. So if they're electing a vice president. Just to circle back to the. Mayor, they make it to the mayor question. Why would we say if the vice president just takes it if the president turns it down? I the vice president, I don't want to be. <laughs> so we're just skipping the step. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> I hear you. I was there too, but I hear you. Okay. Take a minute only because I don't think I want to start a new topic given that we have seven minutes left. Um, and walk through the first couple pages under legislative branch to see if there's anything we're missing. A lot of X's on that first page. Okay, section. Now I'm not even going to avoid you guys all. So those X's are all just, uh, just keep filming until the document falls down. very powerful tool. It's never it's not used very often because you really need to have a huge problem or something to, to
to, to invoke the genre objection. Okay. It just stops everything. Why would it be there? And why is that oh, a the, charter? No, wait, why is that a charter issue, and not a rules of the CC? Rules of the CC. I think that that is appropriate as a charter issue because it allows an individual to prevent something from happening that uh, is totally inappropriate. I, I, I can't think of, it, of an example, but it, from something from being steamrolled that if the public were aware of it, they would uh, voice their objection. Especially if only five people to meet. That's true too. Would that minority consideration come in there? No, but, that's, but that's rules of order of the city council. That's city council rules. Because it's the same type of same type of thing. Because Ray used to use that all the time. And he was the master of it. Okay, I just don't understand why minority reconsideration or whatever is is it city city council rules. And why this is here? Well, I would I would suspect that in the current charter there's no such provision uh, of the minority reconsideration, and what this is doing is codifying it at the highest level to always have the ability to have, uh, in effect, a, a minority reconsideration or prevent the of that from taking place. Now the lawyers in the room and the other people who are a little more with it than I am at the moment. Uh, can I keep doing this? No. I can't come to each meeting and say John Dr. Hughes Harder. This is procedure shall not be used more than once for any specific matter, notwithstanding any amendment to the original matter. Right, thank you. That's that part. Okay. There's an X. No, I, I just want to make sure that I can't delay something forever. There's an X on page eight. Okay, we're taking that whole paragraph out. We're taking that whole section out and replacing it with what's going to be now. I, I have a comment. Okay. We're, taking, we're, taking the, okay. Just, okay. we're taking that whole section 13, out. Okay. A, line 13 to line 23, correct? Is that what we're talking about? Okay, <coughs> vacancies, line 8. All the way to line 23 is coming out. Okay. Yeah, okay, I was already going up to eight. But then on page eight. What line? Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay. Hold on to that thought for just a second. Yeah. Where do we start taking things out? Because line eight is mid sentence. We're on page seven, right? Filling vacancies. So that whole, all of, all of this goes. Well, nine, but actually filling the vacancy stays, but nine, from line nine to line 23 is coming out. Because we're replacing the whole thing to the degree of the mayor not making this provision. I understand. I was going from line 9 here to line 23. You're talking about line 9 on page 7. Yes. To line 23 on page 8. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I got stuck. We all got stuck here. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Steve. <laughs> can, can, go ahead. There was good all to finish this. Actually, here. actually, if you can hang on, Gail, you were I put you on hold for a second. You're all set. That, no, I'm set because it's all out yeah. and you're rewriting it. Right. Then Todd and then Todd. Well, Tom, are you done with this? Because I want to. Yes. I wanted to so I have a different topic. Okay. I found the confusion with Mark's copy on doing with yep. every different yep. number. Yep. Um, the subject to appropriation, members of the city council shall be entitled to reimbursement of their actual and necessary expenses incurred in the performance of their duties. Um, that's on page three, uh, line ten. Is that current practice, or is this something new? Mark seemed to imply that expenses are not allowed. Mary, do city councils get uh, re reimbursed for expenses? I don't think they do because I've talked to Jean before, and even Mary Ann Labarge made reference to the fact that she spent so much of her own money that the five thousand dollars is. Yeah, but I was wondering if that's doing above and beyond, very end, you know, oh, yeah, copies I, things yeah. and hands things out to me all the time. So. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, she's, she's a great city councilor because I always get informed. She brings sure. things to my mailbox. Right, so she spends, right. So she spends that money. Now she doesn't come to you and get the copies made. Right. Yeah. 
Okay, so they want to go to conferences. How does, how does that work? I thought they had to pay it out of their own pocket, but it could be I, to the MMA conference. There was no line item for. There could be. There could be, but there isn't. So if they want to go to the MMA conference, it's on their own. That part is kind of vague, and you know, people could submit mileage compensation. I just don't. I'd like. I'd like to actually. I think the current system works fine for me. Okay, well, let's we can discuss it, but um, let's uh, maybe just do a little homework for us. Hopefully by tomorrow. <laughs> just ask about the compensation piece of it. To maybe check with Wendy because she was obviously your predecessor, the you know uh, not your direct predecessor, but she might have a better history of that. But just say, was there ever compensation for city councilors, and should that you know, this language of the charter, just to make sure that we're not rushing towards slipping something in or out without having vetted it. They may be able to write stuff off tax-wise because it's job-related. Correct. Without getting the conversation, getting it that way. Good. That's a, that's a possibility. Okay. Other comments within this section of the counselors? Any? The legislative branch. Tom. Going back um, to page Four and yeah. twenty. It talks about making uh, basically making the minutes of the uh, of the meeting available. It says with reasonable promptness following each meeting. I would like to see in there, uh, but not later than the next regularly scheduled meeting. So that before, in other words, you have your report prepared before the next regular meeting. First of all, that's wrong because it's not by the city clerk. Mm -hmm. okay, that's a good point. Council clerk. Now, I want to ask the council clerk who happens to be with us, is that feasible? What Tom is proposing, is that feasible given your workload? As long as she's not doing the charter committee. <laughs> <laughs> If you want the minutes of the city clerk's office, you can get them. That, that's them. important. Yeah. So the city clerk is really not the keeper of the records. She's the keeper of the records. She, she, keeps, the, she keeps all the records, but I don't hand in the, um, the minutes to her. I think uh, that Steve is correct that the city clerk should be the place where all the official records of the city are maintained. And they should go to the city clerk's office. Now, it, the council clerk may be the person that's preparing the document, but once that document, for example, the minutes or whatever it is, but once that document is prepared and approved by the council, it should be maintained in the city clerk's office. That's a depository for all records. Okay, we just it up another whole can of worms. No, I, 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 I Should the, the council clerk be referred to in the charter, and any duties of that be referred to in this section of the charter? It will go on this page the charter. five, section eight. You're concerned that on some future date Sorry. there might not be a council clerk? Yeah. Okay, yeah, so they, you're going to work on language on that, and then the specific duties of keeping, and that's where I would suggest that, that as part of her duties of not only keeping the minutes, but making sure a copy of the minutes are transferred to the city clerk's office or as a public record. Does that make sense? I don't think we need to document a process. Anymore. That's okay. correct. It just says that you can go to the city clerk and get the meeting. That's all it says. Okay. All right. Thank 
answer. And, and what I, what my point was, is that I would like to have an outside date upon which that needs to be done, which should be before the next regularly scheduled meeting. Gotcha. That's what I was saying. The following gotcha. each meeting, and not later than the next regularly scheduled meeting. Gotcha. Do we have to be concerned at all about special handling of executive session minutes? Hold that thought. I hear what Tom is saying now. Sickness, vacation, other things, every two weeks is a meeting. I don't want to all of a sudden have to cancel a meeting because the minutes aren't there. So I understand good practice putting it into the charter gets it to a whole other different level of hoops that you have to jump through. And then an occasion where, you know, Mary's trying to fit in a vacation somewhere in her life. And I understand that somebody else would be designated to do it, but I'm just trying to. Did she kick you under the table again? No, she didn't. She did. <laughs> I felt it over here. <laughs> <laughs> she put the wrong leg. So I just just tried to say is I understand the, the the good practice that you're articulating, best practice that's articulating. Is it a charter issue at this point in time? I would say no, <coughs> because of the constraint it could put on. That, that's actually a dope, a good point, if I could just say, because if it came down to my doing the charter minutes or the council minutes, I'd have to do the council minutes. I'm expected to have those ready for the next meeting. So if it came down to prioritizing, council minutes are always first. Yeah. And they should be. But, it's the high, right. it's the highest level. But I'm just, and, and I get that, but I'm just saying, the language you're saying, is that a charter issue? I don't know. I mean, the reason for promptness feels okay to me because you're reasonable is you get the minutes from the last meeting. And that allows for... I, I only say this because I've seen situations that I've been involved with where... Particular board, later. The particular board has not issued minutes for well over a year only because they didn't want them to be made public. Yeah. Can you say 30 days then? Two minutes. The, the meetings are usually every, twice a month, so almost every other week. So it's usually considered within two weeks. So you, you feel that there needs to be a necessarily mean that if they're not submitted in two weeks, the government comes to a crashing halt? No, it's the same situation that Steve was talking about before. Yeah, I'm working on it, the whole thing, until somebody goes to enforce it. But at least it would give a mechanism for forcing the, the vote to be made public. Okay, I'm leaving that way. Are, are, are the people strongly objecting to what Tom is suggesting? And let's go ahead and put that language in. You want to just recite where you want to put it? After each meeting, comma, but not later than the next regularly scheduled meeting. Okay. Consensus. Okay, she says. Yeah, okay. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Is that one of those? I can live with it. I'm not going to die. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't make me puke. Is that what it says? <laughs> <laughs> agenda will be uh, school committee and other elected officials, uh, election, citizen participation, and compensation will all be uh, as the time goes on. We're, we're all issues for the city council. I don't think we're all covered. The ones you what I'm going to do is, is, is uh, send that to are you, are you overnight here or are you going to overnight? I will make sure that uh, you don't have a printer with you. No. You have this, right? I can, I can recreate it. I have no what, what do you want? You want a different I just wanted to make sure those extra added things got out of there. I can, I can <coughs> do it. Okay. Send it, then uh, send it to Mary for copies, if you don't mind. Well, I'll just bring copies. Okay. Works for me. So we'll just continue working our way, working our way through this and through this, if you will. I think we've been
they create progress so because I think we hit some of the more difficult issues. Yeah. Pretty much. How do you feel, Stephen? Yeah. The school committee discussion, I don't you know, I don't know if there's a huge appetite to change that either, but that kind of term staggering and stuff is a little bit strange, right? You don't want to talk that to any other questions or business to come before this at this evening's meeting? Hearing God, thank you for your attention and participation. We will see you back here tomorrow at 5 o'clock.